And welcome to After the Ashes on Tabletop Fables. I am Bridicus, and uh, these are the players. I'm Jacob, I'll be playing Lucas Jones. Hi, I'm Ishtar, I'm finally almost not sick anymore, almost. I'm playing Skywater's administration. And I am DM Cody, I'm on Monday and Tuesday night for D&D, and tonight I am Sam Bolton, security specialist, and really surprised we haven't all got killed yet. Especially <laughs> after last week. Well, you keep on doing things like... Using common sense. <laughs> and remembering you have equipment that I've forgotten you have. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, at the end of last game, they were trying to collect 120 coins um, so they could go and purchase Maddie back from the regulators, essentially. Sorry, not purchase back. Pay off her work release program there. Certainly not slavers. Relief her debt. And um, so they were trying to work out how to do it. Potentially a bank robbery and hijinks and all this other stuff. Then Lucas just went... Can I sell this? And I pulled out some sort of laser weapon. And he did, and he did, and they can. So he now has a heavy sack full of coins. <laughs> and a bag full of them too. Yeah. yeah. So Still incredulous at this. You're in the burned village, in the marketplace. Um, oh gosh. Yeah, quite wealthy. We should start heading over now, but while we've got this, before anything goes wrong. Yes. Carol, you coming with us or should we come back for you after? <laughs> it's a bank heist. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I'll look into some uh, leads I've got. I'll meet you back here in a couple of days. Sounds good. I'll have the radio if you need us. Yeah, I'll stay in the uh, radio range of your uh, your place. That'd be great. He tips his hat. With no corks. Monsieur. Monsieur. My lady. <laughs> <laughs> no corks. See that one. Why do I go? Um, how was Daryl did that? <laughs> he walks off, wanders into the wasteland, dog walking next to him. <laughs> Just see his back walking down the lonesome road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He makes my cockroach go doggy doggy. Yeah, so you guys are. That was bunker speak, by the way. <laughs> was it? Secret coded language. I can't believe we're all weirdos. Anyway, let's start heading off. You guys are headed off. Who's taking point? Uh, I guess I will, in case something's dangerous ahead. Yeah. I always take point. Can yeah. you roll survival minus two, please? As you travel through the air, um, the burned villages territory, around the edge of the ruined uh, Victoria bunker. What's uh, survival? Oh, with survival. With... No successes. Uh, so you take this path, uh, Green Hill Road. Uh, down and you walk through the collapsed um, building that's across it. Uh, you keep going, uh, eventually you come, you're doing this, it's still early, fairly early morning, so eventually it's about midday you start passing the fields where uh, the, uh, yeah, the other facility was. The people were killed by the Arcadians and um, it's the Street Kings there. Uh, do you guys just have a long path or do you walk like back? Well, we're not in their territory, so I'll just keep walking and sort of nod to them respectfully and keep going. Oh, you don't, you don't see any of them, but you see uh, the territory. Just nod to the territory, territory, just like... Mr. Territory, sir? <laughs> uh, we would just go to territory. Yeah. So you keep going across, uh, eventually uh, you reach the top of Nantuck Highway and start travelling into the area you roughly believe is to be the regulator's territory. Got our passports, this is fine. Uh, Eventually, um, I won't even make your roll for it, you start hearing gunfire up ahead. Um, does it sound like it's coming from where they potentially are, the regulators, or is, are we not near there yet? It's in their direction, but you're not... Your intelligence and firearms? Uh, now that you decided to stack some of your skills, I'll make you roll random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to see if you've worked out like how to sound out where firearms are coming from, from distances and so forth. Genius. Can I add my firefight to that? No. Oh, come on, it's called firefight. We just heard a firefight. That's like close quarter. I've got no idea. We had an extra two. You're right, you did. <laughs> you did. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you don't have any idea. It's ahead of you. You still don't really know calibers and distances and uh, retorts and things like that. Not for outside. Okay. You've only been outside for a couple of weeks now, so it's still settling in. I think we should stay low, see what's ahead. That's a good Stay idea. out of it for now, unless we need to get involved. I'm just going to mm. throw an extra investigation tool on there, because I forgot to do that before we start. <clears throat> so I draw my rifle and sort of like hug the walls of the buildings and start moving yep. up carefully. Sure. 
Uh, Dex and Stealth, if you're doing that. I follow him. I will also make a Stealth check so that I don't die. Um, uh, so I'm going to just because I haven't actually asked this before and if all of you roll all the time it's always going to be like D&D where someone fails um, do you want to roll so group average just to ruin your <laughs> good roll or do you want to group average means they go up yeah but it means you go down yeah but everyone will be up I think it's I prefer individuals or if someone fails their self but the other two don't have got the opportunity to then ambush or yep fair enough Potentially. Maybe even three can succeed in So you're walking along, uh, Lucas is attempting to stealth, but he's hearing you're hearing from his he's bell less pocket. Self- ching, ching, he's ching. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. Yeah, and a uh, bit of deliberate sabotage apparently. Yeah. Not that you guys realise that. Yeah, he's trying to find a new weapon. Um so the uh, Yeah, you got that now, don't you? Mm. So the, the gunfire is starting to slow down as you keep going forward. But you gain a sense it's not too far off. Maybe a block, maybe two. Yeah. That sounds like it's still going on. Yeah, but it sounds like it's the tail end of whatever happened. Can I get an idea if it's uh, rifles or pistols or energy weapons? Yeah, make another intelligence or wits and firearms. I mean, that's going to be the same pool. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Your dice don't like you today. No. A it's lot of echoing going on inside these It's buildings. not pistols, it's... Um, Something heavier. Yeah, something heavier. And it's not a machine gun either, it's individual shots. Uh, but like, groups, so you're picking up like, <coughs> part of the tr- trick of it is you are picking up a variety of uh, weapon types. Okay. Um, I'll keep stealthing forward to try and see who's shooting us if they're on our side potentially or not. Uh, sure, so, um, how, you, you don't need to roll again. Um, how are you stealthing though? Like? Uh, well, I'm imagining that if they're having a shootout, they're probably buildings. I'm going to try and use the interiors of the buildings. Yep. Are you two following? I'm yes. following him. I'm trying to be very, very quiet. I'm also going to be cautious of any traps that might have been sent if this is someone's territory. Yep. <clears throat> uh, can you roll... Um, it's actually Wits Composure, surprisingly enough. Imagine that. I'm using this other dice. If you need to, you can borrow some of mine. Um, one success. Ugh. As we all know, the actual size really helps. This is time to make up for some of the dice rolls you've had previously, especially against yeah, my like, special accurate. guy the other week, where you just, oh, it's like my super powerful NPC, oh, he's dead. That was all Jones. My rolls are okay most of the time. Um, I'm warming up to it. Uh, you start to come in uh, to an area that you sense is habitated and habitated. Inhabited. Inhabited. There you I go. like your word. I put that in, in in the wrong spot. I'm speaking bunker speak. <laughs> and um, team, it looks like it's habitated up ahead. You come across a few places that you what think might French? be like um, set up to either set off alarms, like make noise or traps. You just watch that step. You don't know. It's a lot of it's like you can't tell if it's just uh, decrepit building or if it's like deliberately like that. You just steer clear of it. Yeah. There's a few places that you're a bit concerned about, but just some, like stairs and the like. Just things like areas that aren't blocked off, but if someone just had to run through it, that would make noise, like cans would fall on the ground, things like that. Yeah. Um, Set up. Hmm. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Paint cans and touch the string. <laughs> touch the metal doorknob. It's not hot. Touch. Um, eventually, uh, you go up a few floors, uh, you take a bridge across the next building, uh, which some buildings have, and uh, you keep going a bit further. And you hearing gunshot quite close ahead now. It sounds like only one gun in this building. There's more being shot towards it. Um, I'm going to try and get a line of sight on it and just see what the person's wearing, if I can pick up a uniform or... Uh, sure, so I'll woo in another stealth check for those who aren't actively sabotaging. Uh, I know, I'll try and stealth. I should try very hard. Or well, none at all. Two That's all option. I'm going to be this time. Um, you're probably a little bit taken aback because as you uh, walk around the corner you see there are a couple of dead people 
Uh, they would look like they would have been at the windows and shot. Just like, like turn out. the corner, turn mm-hmm. around the corner. You see a person just in fairly like standard um, street clothes, essentially, so more like protective cloak, uh, just general like trash clothes. A lot of these scavengers have. He has a hat on. It's not Daryl though. <laughs> Um, it, have corks. Oh, it does not have corks, and he has got a looks like a homemade rifle. Just leaning over and just taking a shot and pulling back and reloading. I'm going to try and sort of avoid that area and go to a room uninhabited and look through the window and see if I can see who they're firing at. Sure. Somewhere completely different. Um, what did you get on yourself? Uh, two successes. So you head around, do you two follow? Yes. No. Should we re-stealth or not? No, it's fine. Cool. Because that stealth was against the guy at the window. Oh, okay. Yay. Um, <laughs> and was, yeah, so you walk around to a different window and look down. Um, do you two both look down or do you just... I would have signaled for you to stay back just in case. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So you saw the next room over and you just look. Um, it does look like someone was shot here and then ran to the other room, so there is some blood on the ground. Mm. You get up and you look down and you see a couple of people in the regulator's uniform. They are across the other side of the street behind cover with long rifles shooting up. Um, I'm going to move back with my rifle mm-hmm. um, and approach the man with the gun and hold it up loudly, load it, so stop where you are. Uh, yeah, roll intimidation minus is it's plus two for circumstance of pointing a gun at his head minus two because his composure is just flat. Presence intimidation. I'm gonna pull the shot back. Uh, Seventeen. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. Three successes. Um, so yeah, you sort of sneak around the other side of the window to where he is. You don't, I assume you're smart enough not to lean in front of the window as a firefight. You point the gun at him, bark yeah. out your order. He just looks up and uh, yeah, he just pulls himself sort of flat against the window and just absolutely panic on his face. It's, yeah, it's suddenly there's a barrel with gun pointed at, at him. How many more are you? I don't know. Why are, are you firing on you? I don't know. They, they say we're staying here illegally. Why not move on then? We're not. We've been here for years. Stay low. Sort of. Waters. Over here. Yep. Take the radio. Yep. Call the regulators. Tell them we're here. This is the Industries of Waterfall Bunker requesting to speak to the regulators. Over. Pause and mm-hmm. answer. Go on. Permission to enter territory. Over. Uh, yes. Uh, be careful. We are currently undergoing uh, actions. What are the actions so that we may take proper precautions? Over. We're dealing with some criminals. Moment. What is their crime? Over. Let's pause. It's not your concern. Just be cautious. Be cautious. But if we are to encounter them, are we able to help you? Over. Please still uh, steer clear. Understood. Over. Well, it's a bit late for that. <laughs> They'll kill you if you stay here. Keep long, get out of here, and you might just survive. He looks at you and the guns are pointing at him. Looks over at his dead companions. He just sort of shrugs and like, Okay. He backs off, clearly not willing to turn his back on you. I lower my weapon slightly. And um, he steers clear of the window as he goes out to another door and he just runs. You hear him go down the stairs, you hear like a clang of things as he <laughs> runs into one of his own traps. Not like one of the noise traps. Swing my rifle. Actually, no, I don't swing my rifle because it can still be on this building. 
And I said, all right, back out of where we came quietly. And then we'll try to get back out of where we came without alerting the regulators to our presence there. Stealth everyone, please. Mm-hmm. Two successes. Also two successes. <coughs> Three successes. Uh, you get down to the bottom and you go to exit the entrance you came in and you hear people starting to come up to it. So you, you steer clear of them and go to like the next building over and leave through there. And you see like a, a squad essentially go into the building. Yeah. Not as we head past, just like... I'm okay. guessing they don't see us at all. No. Okay. It's, it's they're very focused on what they're doing. It's best to be polite. Let's wait back for them to leave. Yes. So we'll wait for them to leave. When we see them heading off, then we'll catch up with them, essentially, like we just got there. Yep. There's some time goes past. Uh, Then you hear a little bit away uh, some gunshots. They stop. I gave them a chance. (laughs) Yeah, you did. (laughs) No, there's an attempt. (laughs) <laughs> they had scouts on the other side. Oh. Um, I gave him a chance on the dice. It wasn't a big one. <laughs> he had a chance. Aww. Better chance than being shot by them in the building anyway. Um, yep, yeah, so eventually um, they do leave. Well, they, they come out. You, you see that they've collected uh, the weapons and some other sort of more valuable pieces of equipment. I'll make sure all my guns are away and just be sort of walking so they see us as we approach. Uh, yeah. One of them looks up at you, raises the weapon, nods a little bit, says something to another one. Would you like to check our passports? Um, with, when I, as I see them starting to talk. Uh, they'd be a little bit of a wide distance away, I assume. I assume you're oh, not okay. going to step out like 10 metres away from the guy with a gun no. in the middle of an operation. Exactly. Also, when they come out and scan the area, they're like, hey, there's people down there. Yeah, that's... Okay, so, that, that makes more sense. Yeah, if someone does uh, eventually walk over, looks like a corporal, so not the lowest rank, but not like a sergeant. Hi, are you here to check our passports? And I start to reach in to take mine out. As soon as you sort of reach back, he's not going for a pistol, he sort of raises his gun more. For my passport, sir. Looks back and you see like, the people behind him already say, so. Alright, show me. You too. No. Pull my pack around and start going through it. No. What do you want? Were the emissaries from the Waterfall Bunker Facility? Um... Alright, keep going, find someone, another group, we're busy here at the moment. Thank you, sir. And we start to head off. I heard gunshots, you're all safe. None of your business, keep moving. Waters here is an excellent medic if you need help. We have medics. Very well. Not that I'm saying we need any, but we have them. Yes, thank you. Let's head over. So you walk past and you see one of them calling something through on a radio. Um, you go a little bit further and another group meets you. These ones look a little bit better presented. Hello, would you like to check our passports? It's like, a, so it's a bit of an older guy and he's like, uh, yes please. Goes through it again. You get the scowl again. <laughs> <coughs> and what brings you here? We are the emissaries from the Waterfall Bunk facility. Nice. Follow me. Once again, you get escorted in. Um, you, you reach the jungle when you start heading through it. And uh, eventually you reach the, the terminal building and uh, you get escorted inside. And uh, once inside, you got to visit his desk and you get your passport stamped. You get to skip the line this time. Ooh. You get a few people like looking at you like, so yes, and he just wanders around, not even from a settlement. Oh no, I have passports, I'm using the settlement one. You don't have one? Last, yeah, time, two. You, last time you said you were... The yeah, guy. but then I went through for a different person and got a Pokemon, didn't I? No. No, you, know, you only have the vagrant one. Alright, then I'm No, no, I would have, from, I would have known if yeah. you went through for a second one. Because <laughs> um, you'd now be dead. <laughs> I definitely thought I went through for a second one. Um, yeah. So, alright. Can I then break off before we enter and go in and get a new passport? 
You're gonna wait in the line. You're in the general terminal. Um, you probably would think you couldn't. Like, this guy was walking in front of you, but there were people escorting you either side and behind with guns. Yeah. And then the building you're currently in is the same building where they issue them. So, yeah. it would be really obvious. <laughs> I won't keep going for now. Yeah. Next time I come back with like glasses and moustache. <laughs> I mean, if you want, I'm happy for you to have tried to for, modify or forge a new passport. In no. the meantime, I'll come back later and get a new one. Sure. Um, it's just like duck off from us during the night and just like sneak back for a new passport and come back. So I'll find the most senior security person there hmm. and approach them. Yeah. Um, is the guy still there that was sort of in the other? No, is it, is it, there is a guy up there, but it is a. Different guy. So, why don't we just head directly to the worker release section? Well, yes, I suppose we could. Do we need authority to go through there? Turning to one of the nearest escorts, just like, do we? Puffed up with a sort of a bit of self importance. I, I, I will take you there. Wonderful, thank you. And it leads you to the tower of the, the airport. Uh, still very well fortified, still. People at the front, heavy combat armor, guns. It's everything. good to be the king. Um, you get brought inside, this sort of octagon shaped area inside, um, and led to the desk, which is the sort of work release program area. I head up to the desk. Mm -hmm. Hello, good sir. Our passports, if you wish. We are here from the Waterfall Bunker facility. We are here about the work release program for Maddie, who was purchased from the slavers a few days ago. He takes your passports. We have the 120 coins. There's a sort of holds up his hand and goes, let me check the paperwork and goes off and comes back. There's a time delay there. I won't make you sit through it. <laughs> so what do we get to do in the next six hours? <laughs> well, it's probably at least solid 10, 15 minutes. So do you guys do anything in that time? Probably in the next hour. Yeah, possible. I mean, if you would like to pop off and do that. It didn't take more than 15 minutes. Time is yep. Checking out the security measures hmm. um, and taking note of sort of the way they patrol, the weapons they've got, um, the way the security force seems to be um, working, because it seems effective to me, and I think I'd probably take that back to the bunker. Hmm. Uh, in here, it's mainly um, like just people at key points, like uh, stairs that lead up. I've got two people at the bottom, the doors have got two people, there's two people on the other side. They will have heavy like combat armor that similar to what Daryl has, a little better looked after, less, in the sense that it's less modified. Uh, most of them have, uh, well, they will have uniforms. Uh, the uniforms don't entirely match, but they're pretty close. Um, clear is that some of them look like they've been scrounged. Sort of think more like some of them are like uh, city camo, some are like country camo. That's probably the biggest variation there is in any of those terms. Yeah. They're all, so it's more sort of fatigues than it is, like, there's no dress uniforms or anything like that. Okay. Um, although they still have, like, pips on their shoulders. It's sort of a, it's a mix between, we can actually have got our hands on this stuff, and we still want to look important. <laughs> generally the people Good in- Good middle ground. Good middle ground. Generally the people in here are a bit older. Um, uh, you'd assume veterans. Uh, at least the combat people are. The behind the desk, um, generally higher ranked people, um, generally a bit older. No one here is very, like, old, old though. No one here would be above Sam's age. Not that Sam's particularly old. But there would be some mid 30s. Yeah, well, that's like the oldest you'd see. Um, but you know there's people back in other rooms that uh, you haven't interacted with. Uh, you see there's at least two people in the room with uh, CVs amongst the guards. Which, the amount of technology they have, I mean, just the sheer number of CVs they have is, is pretty impressive. Could I wander up to the door and look out? Is it like a glass door where I can look out and watch the patrols and just see sort of Oh, like a window. Um, you... Uh, no, it looks like there would have been once, but it's been boarded up better. Okay. In that case, I'll just continue to wait. Yeah. Plus, you'd actually stand directly between two guards, and from your experience as a security officer, they probably wouldn't be happy with it. They don't have to be. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> I am the emissary. I'm the one who watches. 
What, what's that? Presence? Intimidation? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you get particularly good at intimidating people and they've got a bunch of armed friends, that might not go that well for you. <laughs> it's probably fine. Eventually the guy comes back and he says, uh, Yes, uh, 120 coins, it's been pre-arranged. Yes. If you would. Sam, do you have the other bag? The other bag? Yes, you do. We were each handed one bag each, and he took the remainder after ten were given to Daryl. You do well, have the other bag. Ah, yes. Here we go. Sort of gestures and a, a younger man comes over, he looks like he's lived a much harder life. Um, he's not in a uniform. He takes them and puts them on a desk next to him and counts it all out. Um, counts it all out. Once it's hit 120 very clearly, does it in a, quite a methodical way. Um, does it. Very well. Um, I will arrange to have someone take, uh, take you to her. And um, uh, once I have completed the paperwork. Wonderful. Thank you. Will that be today? It will be, yes. Now that the money is here, the paperwork is already completed after your emissary came. Very well. Wonderful. Basically, he has the file in front of him. He just goes to stab and goes... Wonderful, thank you. May we go and collect her? Yes. Who will be escorting us? I don't know. You can arrange that yourself. Very well. She delicately takes and puts the file in her pack. Is our uh, guard still here that escorted us here to start with? He is, yeah. Maybe well, he is once, once you walk out, like, he's outside, but he's in Wait. the area. Yeah. Maybe show him the paperwork, he might be able to take us there. Yes, we head back out to that same guard. Hmm. Excuse me, sir, you were so helpful before with the escort. Would you be able to escort us to this person here? We're here to collect them and take them home. Ah, uh, yes. That'll be Terminal 2. Uh, sure. Wonderful, thank you. So he essentially marches, keeps a quite a quick pace. Um, he reaches, uh, so you saw Terminal 1, this is Terminal 2. Um, so you see a lot of officers and the like inside. Uh, he starts walking you through. There is a lot of guards here. You see there's a lot of people who, like the other, other younger man, um, are dressed in just like casual clothes and things like that. Um, you see some of them have like chains around the neck, like not like full on chains, but like collars and things like that. Um, with science, probably more Lucas's street, but anyone can do it if they want. Can we all roll it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, two successes. One success. One success. Uh, you notice that some of the people uh, have... So you got one success, one success. Right. Um, so you two notice that um, uh, these guys, the ones with the sort of the more leather collars on them, they have some sort of devo like electrical device on them. And uh, you also notice that, um, probably being a little bit more socially aware, that uh, a lot of them also have more bruises and the like on them. Uh, you suspect it's probably some sort of um, order device. <laughs> Um, incentive device. Yeah. Incentive. Extreme incentives. Yes. It's it's about reaching elite performance indicators. <laughs> um. So you yeah essentially you, you get walked into this large office. Uh, you see there's a number of guards around the wall. They all look generally quite bored, and you see rows of desks. Uh, most of these people are civilians, although it looks like at the head of every row. Uh, sorry, the yeah, head of every column, so like the front row of desks essentially, there's someone in an actual uniform. And behind them they have like staff essentially. Uh, so they walk in, this guy sort of looks around, goes up to just, seems to you guys to be someone fairly random and hands over the file. It says, uh, I should note, Madison Hawk is to be released, hands over the file, and you see her, she's in one of the rows, and you, at the sounding of her name, she's Looks up. She's in, like, she's, she's in shock. Um, and um, she's like freezes, not knowing what's about to happen. But 
you see like, there's a certain bit of hope in her eyes. Um, eventually this person just nods to your escort and uh, he hands the file back to you. Thank you. And the escort just walks over and just like grabs Maddie by the arm and just essentially drags her across. Um, she falls out of her seat and has to be basically bodily picks her up and pulls her over. I sort of take a half step forward and then hold myself back. About three guards, yeah. Take a, a quarter step forward. <laughs> <laughs> she do that. Um, eventually he walks over and he's like, Yeah. Thank you, you were very helpful. <laughs> I like the way you took. Uh, yeah, just like, I, I assume it was, it was like <laughs> passing her arm, just like yeah. grabs up. Thank you, you were very helpful. It's like, yeah, t- Let this be a lesson, don't. Just hope we don't see you back again. Hopefully not, yeah. Well, you benefit from this more than we did. Well, the debt's been paid. Yes, but we can't allow criminal matters to continue. It wasn't a criminal matter. She was kidnapped from us and sold. <laughs> criminal matter is buying slaves, I would say. But she's here on work release. Why would she be here otherwise? Go and get rid of her. We don't want to see her like around here. Come on, let's go, Maddie. Yes, but it's time to go home. I say like my arm through her arm. Time to go home. And we start to walk off. <laughs> she's still very unsure and you can feel like trembling through the arm. I'm just like basically pulling her along with the arms like just like let's go. And as you're pulling her along you do see there's like faded bruises across her as well. Um, it's a bit hard to tell exactly how long they've been there like if they were there from the slavers or if they were there from these guys or what. Um, we'll figure that out after we've left. And so you eventually lead her, lead her back the way you can. This guy does follow you sort of escorts you but he's just hangs back a bit go and get our passport stamped out with the senior security member on the way out yep uh, so you get there and um, one of the senior security officers has passports stamps 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 I pass the file to prove our proof of ownership <laughs> no worries <laughs> Stamps that too, hands it back. Thank you. Well, let's go then. Yes. And yeah, they're just from your security officer's eyes, they're looking at her like she's a criminal. Just pointedly start marching away mm-hmm. and start heading home. And then after we are a sizable distance away, then we'll start talking. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you guys leave the terminals, um, and you see like. Uh, a lot of the area around the buildings is still being cleared out more and more. You see these guys in casual clothes uh, with various tools, mainly axes, some like heavier machinery to try to, not like forklifts or bulldozers. Why do I say forklifts to the truck? Like bulldozers, <laughs> like backers. Uh, nothing quite even that heavy, but just like chains and uh, things like that to try to pull out stumps. It's back breaking manual work. Um, Working on essentially expanding the clear area around this place. You guys walk into the, the forests, but they kind of keep going, keeping silent until we are out. Yep. And cautious because I remember being told that there were potentially dangerous creatures in here. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, with an uh, animal can. Sky just like does not unlock her arm from keeping Maddie in place, just like. <laughs> Protection. One success. <laughs> um, you see there's like fairly well trodden paths and areas that are at least partially clear and you keep to that and you don't come across any problems. Eventually you reach the edge of the airport, uh, the old airport and uh, yeah, into the side streets. Still in regulated territory but outside of their jungle. We're going to keep going. This guy is very pointedly continually walking forward. How far are you going to keep going until you start talking to her? Until we are outside of their area. No. Um, on the way, you do see a group of the regulators come towards you. They recognise you because they were the guys clearing out that house. Just a gentle nod. Looks like there's a couple of... Uh, 
It's probably say about 15 year olds that you didn't see before in their group. They are wearing uniforms, but they don't have any insignia on them. They essentially look like they're carrying the spoils, if you will. Women boys. <laughs> One of them's got a marching drum. <laughs> um, yeah, so they give you a nod and walk past. And we just keep going. Uh, eventually you're out of the territory into the area just outside the uh, Street Kings. And I stop. I just gently go and I'm like, are you okay? Just, uh, she's still shaking. It's just, um, uh, better, better now. Thank God. How did you get me out of there? We paid off the debt. Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. We made a we made it so that it could happen, otherwise you were going to be stuck there for like seven years. We went to the bunker, correct? Connect, uh, contacted them directly to organise this. Oh. You're important to the bunker, we needed you back. Oh, thank you, it's, it's good to know. And from what I hear, seven years wouldn't have been half of it. Um, what do you mean? Um, well, I think I was already up to nearly eight years. Oh. Um, not following orders buys more time, I trust. Yeah, you know, you wake up late, get clock in a minute late, and that day doesn't count, and speak back to an officer, that day doesn't count. I'm glad we only had to find 120 of those coins. I saw someone punch, um, punch one of the security guards, and, or one of their guards, and I got like an extra two years. Oh gosh. Uh, uh, and this is Jet Lee. Are these, are these bruises from there or were they from the slavers? Uh, a bit of both. Uh, um, they weren't as bad as the slavers, but um, well, even then the slavers weren't that bad. It, this is mainly from those people who grabbed us. Um, oh, um, you got to tell the bunker to watch out if they got to the summit. To... That's not going to be an issue. Don't worry. Oh. <laughs> oh. Good, good. Not going to be an issue. <laughs> yes, it's this fine. This guy stabbed him repeatedly in the face and throat. That <laughs> actually is that. <laughs> <laughs> she got really good on her roll, but she probably realises that. <laughs> Let's go home. Yes, yes. Um, You'll need your debriefing when you get back. Yes. Do you think these regulators are people that we can negotiate with effectively going forward? You're the only person with the inside knowledge. I think in the short term, yes. As much as I hate to say it, you know where you stand with them, even if you don't like it. Um, but I don't know the. You know, I know stores, and that's my thing. And that's why it took me logistics. You know, and I'm as much. Do you want to use logistics as a different term? But like stores and uh, forward planning, that's my thing. And. Once they knew that, they had me on some of it. Uh, they're buying uh, up a lot. They're taking everything they can. Uh, I think they have much greater ambitions. Uh, I don't know how far though. Um, they mentioned they're already working towards some things. Yeah. Uh, and they want to clear away the slavers. Yeah. Once, they feel they're not ready yet. No. Well, only once they've got enough forces. Well, it seemed to be they're transferring a lot more to the north. Um, how much is in the north? I don't know, the transferring ammunition supplies, lots of it, medical supplies. How do they transport it? Uh, that wasn't my responsibility. Um, Time-wise, I'd say I didn't even see maps. What are they doing in the north? The only things up there that I can really remember are the Hulk, uh, the Queen's Town. Oh, it was the Hulk. They're going to the Hulk? Yeah. Yeah. Why are they going to the Hulk? Um, it's it's, it's another settlement. We can always ask He might have seen them coming in. Maybe, but it's supposed to be another settlement. Well, I believe it is. Hmm. They have to be trading with someone, but for what is the question? True. If, if they're sending munitions and medical supplies... There's a number of settlements that uh, owe them allegiance. And there are more settlements that they provide security for. They're buying loyalty. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, let's get you back. 
Maybe uh, making themselves intentionally useful. I say it's like we start walking. I uh, assume we've been walking the whole time. Oh yeah, yeah. We well, cool. did say you stopped. <laughs> yeah. I uh, grabbed her and stopped, but if we keep kept walking from that onwards, it's fine. If they're if they're making themselves too important to get rid of. Well. If they're making other people have to rely on them, it means that their presence is more important than their absence. Well, there's two avenues we can take here. First is go and find out at the Hulk, see what's happening there. The second one is get back to Daryl, see what we can do about securing large amounts of coins, because that could make us... Very important. More important than they would like, potentially, but we wouldn't have to let them know what we have. Is there a way to create these coins? But they're an old world thing, but um, was if there is a way to create them, then that would give us an advantage. I did know that the counterfeiting was a death penalty when it came to things like that. Which right, certainly means people try. Daryl's information is correct, we might not need to worry about it. Mm. Mm. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> I hate to think what they're going to buy with uh, what you pay for me. Probably more ammunition. Seems to be the main thing. If I was in their position, I'd be doing the same thing. What do you make of this, Jones? They seem like fine people. I have no problem with them. What about technologically? They seem to be about the same as us. They have so many more radios. They just have more radios, not any more advanced. But it means they have easier communication, more coordinated. They have more people. Do you want to make a wits and science roll? Oh boy. Just to actually determine that? Or you don't have to, you can just... Yes. Well, I know nothing. But yeah, I'm just assuming they yeah, have more people. Yeah, it's fine. They're not all in one building, so we don't need you're that many toys. Yeah. So, um, yeah, with survival minus two. Don't fuck us up. Fuck us up. One success. No, you didn't. he didn't fuck you up. <laughs> um, I win. Mean, so you travel um, the sort of side paths. <laughs> Past Street Kings, uh, you, Maddie starts getting quite exhausted. Um, she hasn't, and which makes you realise how much intolerance you build up to uh, everything. Even the sun, although you still. I still have my hat. You keep your hat and you wear longer clothes, but. You know, um, is it getting later in the day now that we've stopped at the Burn Village gone there? Maybe we should stop for the night somewhere. How far are we from the Burn Village? You'd be able to get there before nightfall. Well, we could still make it before nightfall. We could make it to the bunker, but I think Maddie needs to rest. Perhaps we should ask them if we can spend the night there. Yes, maybe. Because it, it's still another little while before we reach the bunker. Yes. I'd appreciate that. Alright. Then let's head to the Ben Village. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm passing my canteen. Oh, thank you. She drinks all of it. <laughs> um, I sort of shake the wood. We can refill it later. Yeah, it's for the food place, isn't it? Yeah. Food place. Here you go. No, the, the burn village. It's... I hold our rations anyway. Oh, she takes it and eats it fairly greedily. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just some of their supplies come from there. Yes, I imagine they do. Yes, they have the sheep. Hmm. What are those called again? Sheep. No, no, where they keep them. Farm, the vertical farm, and it's. I still want to call it cheap aquatics. Yeah. Oh, by the way, they're sheep. Sheep? Yeah, the individuals are sheep, but together they're sheep. Oh, I see. Mm. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> A gaggle of sheep, I believe they're called. <laughs> yes, sir. How do you know? <laughs> oh, I get things on the road. We're well travelled now, you see. <laughs> Um, eventually you arrive, arrive at the Burn Village. Um, I'm trying to think how many people you told that you were trying to get the fourth. You told some people, didn't you? Trying to get. Uh, Maddie back from regulators. Uh, we were told, we told Lincoln. Yeah, we, we were told, told. We told you know, Lincoln and Daryl. Oh, we wouldn't have told random people, though. No, yeah. only Lincoln and Daryl. Okay. Yeah, so she's. Um, she's just dressed like. You see a lot of the other people around here are dressed. Um, from what you can gather, her just general uh, bunker clothes probably were taken. Um, 
So yeah, you get in and you see the, the markets starting to close up. Uh, no, it's about night time, the markets aren't closing up. Some of the stores are, but the food places are still open. You smell, uh, shashlik, essentially. <laughs> we shall head inside. Uh, yes, uh, do you leave your weapons? Yes. <laughs> I leave my guns, but I try and take my arm in. Your armor? The arm. The arm. Oh, okay. How well, like, does it- How nice is it? Like, it's a pipe, essentially, on your arm. If anyone asks, I say it's a drill of how to kill. <laughs> Oh, good. This is coming loose. Do it up for me. They don't even look twice at it. Yeah. They roll oh a one. They, <laughs> they give you an extra power pack just in case. I'll go after the security and give them all my guns. Yeah, get those in the locker. Once okay. again, I had a revolver as well. Cool. I I give well, that's going to be a dex stealth minus one. Right. I can see a tiny bit of revolver in there. Don't worry about that giant thing on your arm. <laughs> the giant pipe with the glowing. <laughs> It's gone forever. So it's countertronic down the side. I let them have uh, my stun baton, by the way, to put in there. I imagine it just says, this is my boom stick and grab. Yeah. <laughs> I assume it falls out as they kiss me. What did you get? None. Well, they still I have... believe it was a crit failure. They still have to roll better than... Because your defense, they still have to get at least one success. Oh, okay. You walk in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I you should tighten up your security. <laughs> well, your composure is three, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah, you notice that there's like at the back. Where do you put it on your body? Well, I guess I put it in my jacket last time, so that's where I put it this time. Yeah, you notice there's like the telltale bulge because you're a bit more familiar with the back of clothes. <laughs> and with him. And with him, and the, the security give him a look over, but they don't seem to notice it. But they seem to be more interested in the arm. But they don't say anything about the arm or the gun. But you're pretty certain he has a gun on him. Yes, I'm almost always pretty certain he has a gun on him at any point. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, you walk in. Um, things are starting to wind down for the day, but people are still working. Uh, some of the more physical work, people are working a bit harder. Obviously now it's a bit cool that they can. Uh, yeah, you smell food being cooked. I always food. Uh, Yes, let's go get food. You pay for it with coins? I pay for my food, my coin. I imagine one coin would buy you a fair bit of food. <laughs> like, you probably feed yourself for a week at least. Yeah, when you speak to um, the, the chef in charge is Anne, and, um, because I did make some notes. <laughs> yeah! Um, she, when she gets the coin, she puts food down for all of you. Right. Thank you, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that hand movement. <laughs> Thanks, Jones. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Here, Maddie, tuck in. Oh, thank you, Sam. I mean, thank you, Lucas. <laughs> and we all find Lincoln. <laughs> um, Swearing under your breath about buying food for other people. <laughs> <laughs> He looks to be talking to a um, couple of guys uh, who are wearing essentially uh, poor man's camo and they have like long rifles. Mm, okay. I go up to him and I'm like, and I uh, say, hi Lincoln. 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 Uh, I was wondering, do you perhaps have extra sheeps? Uh, we don't, I wouldn't say we have extra. We have uh, nothing, but we have some. Do you have some sheets available for sale? Um, well, the price, we're always happy to hear a price, but yes, we will, we would sell some sheets. Realistically, I have a location in mind to put a bunch of sheets. How many sheets would I need to build a like, sheep of Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Still looks a bit confused, but he answers. Uh, like, um, like a building? Yeah. Um, well, the handy thing is you can start with two. As long as you're not too greedy, then next year you'll have more than two, and the next year after that you'll have a lot more than that. I have these coins. Would you be willing to trade some sheets for coin? Um, depends how many, but yes. How many can I get for ten coins? 
Uh, well, if you're looking to start your own farm, means we'd have to give you a breeding pair. Uh, mm, do you need training into how to look after them? Yes. Well, we'll have to factor that in. Um, I'm sure I can just trade you knowledge for that. Uh, depends on knowledge. Uh, you know what? You guys have done right by, by us. Um, I reckon I could give you a, a ram and a new for... <laughs> That was just me not being able to pronounce words. And you, for uh, 10 coins. Sorry, all that I get a ram and a... <laughs> a ram and an oo. An oo. <laughs> that isn't right. how it is. It's an oo. Uh, it's the future. It's an oo now. <laughs> the sheeps are called oos. Ooh. Ooh. I said it was the oo edition. Oh, woo. <laughs> it's because they look really gross, not oo. Which is not knowing anything about breeding. Um, <laughs> we can yeah. Clear. yeah. <laughs> you know Scrooge McDuck, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll... Damn it, I want some more. <laughs> Just give it a few months. <laughs> oh, no, I want to eat now. Uh, I will come back when I have more coin. Very well. Lincoln has wares if you have the coin. <laughs> Does he? Does he also have a sweet roll? <laughs> Let's see what other jobs I have, but I forgot about. Nothing happens. As you walk, uh, can you roll with some composure for me? Yeah. I have composure or something. I hope so. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's the Wilhelm. Have the composure. <laughs> I printed off the character sheets. So. Look at that dice roll. One success. Um. Cool. As you walk away, you hear uh, Lincoln say something to the other two. You don't catch what it is. Hmm. I'm going to go find Jack. Yep. Where are you going to look for him? Well, actually, before you do that, what are you guys doing? Um, We're having a nice meal with Maddie. Yeah, I'm guessing us seeing Maddie still scarfing his food down. I sort of halfway through mine, pass her the rest of my plate. Yeah, uh, you do that and... <sighs> See, like she's at the point where after a, after a while, you know, you can see it's like she's at the point where she hasn't eaten for a while, like a proper meal. But she's scarfing it all. She's in pain, but, but she's still eating. Going. But as you do oh, that, because he left. Hmm? I took my food. Oh. Uh, you fine. get another plate of food put in front of you. But this uh, matronly woman, she's like, Aww. Well, thank you. Oh, you paid for a lot more than that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Well then, feel free to serve it up to anyone who's hungry. Oh, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. <laughs> You're not here to argue. So she's going around, she's, you hear like, Food she, for she, everyone. she must have heard what you were saying before and she's like, oh, it's thanks to that Lucas guy, it's thanks to that Lucas guy. Yeah. Here's to Lucas. <laughs> Hold up before. A couple of people are like, Roar. you hear that as you're going, where are you looking for Jack? <laughs> I guess where we were before, downstairs. Uh, so you head down to like the battery farm. Yeah. Um, you notice that um, he's not there, essentially. Right, I'll walk back up and I'll ask around the person if they know where is. Sure. Manipulation and uh, investigation. That's totally not it. It's streetwise? Yes, it would be streetwise. Yeah, but manipulation streetwise. Oh, Make him not socialise. <laughs> Oh, cool. Ooh, I got one success. <laughs> Plus his dice, I can get checked at some point. <laughs> Except that's not even the first set of, like, that's not even the third set of no. dice he's had for this game. Dice really like him, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna get a dice tray checked. Yes. <laughs> yeah, magnetic. Um, yeah, I don't know, uh, where did we get it from? <laughs> uh, where did we get it from? Laura's legendary loot? <gasps> then, did they give us rigged dice trays? <laughs> Anyway, yeah, enough <laughs> midstream plugs. Um, you eventually find out that he's working um, on some water purification just in one of the back rooms. So mm -hmm. I assume you head there. Yeah. And um, yeah, you hear the thrum of uh, pumping machinery, which you're very familiar with, and you head in. You see the guy working on it with his toolbox. Yeah. Uh, hello, Jeff. That's how people work and stuff. That's how losers work. Yeah. <laughs> it's a panel on the wall. 
You Can see Michelangelo it? Just see it like a huh? But it doesn't even the, the the noise he gives gives you the impression that he doesn't know who you are. As in he's so focused. Yeah. Uh does it look like he's got a lot of work to do? Um well you feel familiar enough with these systems to know there's always work to do. Yeah. I walk up to him like I touch him in the throat, so I pause for a second. Yep. I would be willing to trade some hours of work to help you along today if you could give me some information. So, uh, sure. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know anything, but um, okay. Uh, I assume you worked on the sheep of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Would you mind while we work explaining it to me? Uh, yeah, from what I know. That's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys just start working. Uh, yeah, intelligence and crafts. Let's see how good a job you do. He looks over. And, uh, and you now you can. Uh, are you um, deliberately making this last longer so you have more yeah. time talking? Okay, I'll take every count with how many scissors. Can I use my skill expertise for repair? Sure. Sweet. That's what it's there for. It's a one knife, yeah. Yeah. You should also consider the I'm area of expertise merit at some point. What? The area of expertise merit, it allows you to add a plus two for self stability instead of plus one. Like he has the pistol. Yeah. Oh, that was bad. Three successes. Um, as before, you impressed him enough that he, you then end up going on to like the next thing. Actually, what happens more specifically is you fix the water pump, and he's like, "Oh!" And as he's talking about it, he's like, "Oh!" And he gets very, he's very f a focused individual. And um, as he's talking about it, he starts describing how um, basically. They get water off the top of the buildings from when it rains, they filter it out, and they essentially have troughs uh, set up for the sheep. And uh, he goes, oh, actually, um, one of the filtration systems, uh, one of the, the sheep aponics, um, needs to be uh, fixed. Uh, if you help me with that, and then you go on. Yeah. And uh, as he's very focused on doing the work, you probably look around a little bit more. Yeah. Um, it smells of shit here. There's, um, I live in a bunker, we got some less shit. No, this is the floor of manure. <laughs> Did Jonas have to go past us to go out? Eh, probably. To Jones! Share Jones! He's just like, I wonder who that Jones guy is. And uh, he says that to you. We're going to get to the point where we're going to get into a wreck statue of him. You have no idea why. I'm just about to stare at him like this. Nah, it'll be a statue of Daryl with Jones on the <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Takes me back to the tiefling. <laughs> <laughs> Only one trolling idea per campaign. I mean, per. The, you know what I mean? Um, so okay. yeah, you go, and it's, while you're doing it, you see that it's basically they seem to let the manure from the sheep allow uh, grass. Like grass, I mean, like vines and stuff to grow on the levels. And from what you can tell, they have the sheep come in, eat through the place, move on to the next building. And they sort of cycle them around. Yeah. There's water in here. They keep the place pretty um, rich in fertilizer and water. These buildings, you're not an expert on the construction of these buildings, but these buildings are pretty trashed actually. Like, you don't know, whatever they're doing is clearly wearing it, weather, like weathering it a lot quicker than it should be. Yeah. Um, uh, to the point where you probably wonder if in 10 years this will still be usable. Right. And um, yeah, he just shows you the systems, they have light in there mainly. No, they don't have artificial light in there, sorry. But yeah, they, he has the water in there, takes you up in the roof, shows you the where they collect the water, which is essentially just large tarps. Um, <coughs> instead of being made out of tarp material, it's made out of leather. Um, as you're up there, you also notice there are like essentially uh, snipers' nests. Uh, none of them are currently occupied on this building, at least. No. Um, yeah, you see it all get funneled in the water. Um, there's no tanks or anything. There's just I don't know if it's something Lucas would directly think of, but it's, there's a general assumption that it's going to rain every day or two. Yeah. So it rains a lot more now. Yeah. Three tears for global warming. Hip hip. No. 
<laughs> What's climate change? Hey, look. You set up enough nukes. Well, it was a nuclear winter, but then after that, um, good old ice age. Basically, we've got a little fucked up. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you learn. You don't. He doesn't teach, teach you anything about how to breed sheep or anything mm. like that. No, but I learn about the, the technological side of it because that's no. what he cares about. That's that's he talks about what he's working. Yeah. Which is pretty simple when you get down to it. I'm sure if you leave the sheep together long enough, they'll figure out how to breed. No. Sheep and sheep. Not if you're that stupid, you put two mouths together or something. <laughs> well, as long as they're selling me. A well, they already told me not Lincoln to do that. Lincoln did say to give a breeding pair a ram and an ooh. Therefore. Yeah. And only some sheep are gay. Yeah. But it doesn't help even if they do have sex. Because <laughs> it will still not make baby sheep, so our sheep aponics will fail. I'm all for sheep equality, but we're looking for baby sheep here. <laughs> not right. Um, as long as you're not forcing them. Um, just let it happen naturally. We'll just play some Barry White, light some candles. <laughs> the problem is, uh, the ram just walks up and he's like, So, do you want to breed a woo? And the female sheep's like, mm, No thanks. The female sheep's like, Ew. <laughs> it's like you're a Nick, you're a Nick Wall. <laughs> Tipped horns. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes, please help me help me. So you guys, once, once you finish eating, he's, he's going to be gone for hours. Yeah, at that point I will just try and find somewhere comfortable for Maddie to sleep. Yeah. That's not too difficult. Just a corner. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so... Yeah, there's the, the tents and the life around here. The seer tent's still there. Um, there's... More space downstairs. Downstairs is going to be where she's most comfortable, so we'll yeah. find somewhere down there. Yeah, there's spare rooms around. Um, it looks like most, like, people, like some of the families have tents, but a lot of the living is quite communal. It seems to be there's a lot of traders come and go. I'll try and find somewhere fairly private, um, and then I'll ask you to have a look at her, make sure she's okay. Yeah. Well, there's like essentially um, the side rooms, which are the old stores at the bottom level of the mall. Yeah. Um, and then they have rooms inside them, like the offices and stuff there was. Yeah. Because like, the windows are all smashed, the interiors are looted out, but there's rooms at the back. Uh, so we'd find one of those just to give some privacy, yep. so she can do a bit of a quick medical. Sure. Intelligence and medicine, if that's what you want. I'll just yep. stay out the front. I'm going to add a willpower, because I care about this. And it was worth it. Four successes. So close to crazy. So you start looking and you see that, um, yeah, she's got a series of like cracked ribs, mm -hmm. um, and she's got like a the last remain healing or bruise deep across her face, but um, it's nearly healed now. Like, and <clears throat> the bones are probably not really set quite right, but short of rebreaking them, it's a bit late now. Um, you do see though that she has like a a cut also across her shoulder and it looks like it's been infected. Alright, so I'll have to treat that. Mm -hmm. Can I attempt to find one of the medical people from here again? Uh, yes. Um, you remember seeing the uh, old lady who treated you before? Yes. She was up e eating when you were up there. Yes. I, I asked Maddie to wait here and I'm going to go see if I can go find her. <laughs> uh, she's still up there. Cool. Um, I'm, I'm going to delicately approach. Um, excuse me, mm -hmm. you were the really wonderful lady who provided me medical aid the first time I was here. That's my job. Yes, um, my friend who I'm bringing back home, uh, she has a big cut across here and I think it's infected. W what should I do for it? Uh, I got some powders that can help with that. Um, I um, would really appreciate that. Afraid I have to trade for supplies. That makes perfect sense. But, um, basically I'll be doing the same as uh, what happened, I did for you guys last time after you were bit by those dogs. Yes. Was it? Yeah, it was dogs, wasn't it? Um, Alright, lead on. Thank you. I, I start leading her back to Nanny. Yeah. Um, I try and get a gauge of what is what she wants in return. 
so I can make sure to find it. Um, last I time she it. took uh, just like tools and things like that. Okay. Uh, probably have something. It seems from what you've seen, it's probably anything that would help this place. I probably got something in my pack somewhere. I'm at probably or certainly. Well, we'd have some basic survival tools, like if we had to set up a camp somewhere quickly, we'd have some very basic things. Well, Jones would have like all the. Yeah, Jones would have the Yeah, we would have like basic things. Basically, Swiss Army knife, things like that. You, I'm very fairly wise. sure you. I think Jones has a multi tool and you two don't. And I think I'm not strictly using all the time, I have salt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I grabbed things to trade. I just haven't traded with them yet, so I probably still have Well, I have, like, weapon maintenance tools, so she might be interested in trading those. It'll help the bunker somewhere. That, that facility. That settlement somewhere. Took me a bit. <laughs> Eventually. Um, Got there. We can always offer it for um, So, yeah, just make a manipulation persuasion roll to see if she'll accept sure. the weapons maintenance tool. Mm-hmm. Persuasion. Uh, minus three. Gonna add a willpower. Cancel that out. Yeah. One success. Um, she doesn't seem hugely interested in it. Um, you sort of get the impression it's more like, uh, I don't want more people shot. You know, like she's a doctor, <laughs> not an older lady. For that it's like. Yeah. And it's also a very it's apologetic, we don't have something more appropriate for her. I'll point out the fact that if her weapons and people here's weapons work better, then perhaps the people that are shooting at them might be around to shoot at them much longer. It's, um, it's too old to think like that. Um, but don't worry, I'll do what I can, at least enough to get her back to your settlement. What? We'll bring some tools back for you when we visit next time. Yes, what kind of things are you after, specifically? Well... I mean, I like things I can use uh, medically. Um, she just lifts off a bunch of mainly surface plants and things like that. What about uh, tools such as scalpels? They come in handy, yes. Uh, as long as they're sharp and clean. We might be able to provide that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see, and it's just like, oh well, if you're talking things like that, then sharp, good sharp needle and thread. Is helpful. Um, she just lists off some basic, very basic first aid things. Basically, what you get for ten bucks at the store. First yeah. Aid kit. Some tweezers. Yeah, maybe some, maybe even some gauze. Um. You know, like um, actually, probably not gauze, because they would just have enough wool here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, just basic third aid, first aid kit stuff. Yeah. Um, um, I'll tell her we'll see what we can do and bring something back for her next time. Thank you. So yeah, she um, cleans out the wound, puts like some sort of powdery thing mixed up with uh, some water over to sort of seal it. And she says, describes it as being antibacterial. Um, it's not that big a cut. It was probably done by a weapon, um, but then he doesn't remember what it's from. And um, yeah, so she just essentially just seals it up. It will leave a pretty nasty scar, sort of a bit like prestigious sort of thing. This guy just fascinatingly watching, trying to learn. She doesn't do anything uh, that's particularly new to you, uh, except use this powder. But you've seen the bunkies is different, but similar things. It's just an antibacterial. Thank you so much for that. That was incredibly helpful. She does not. Well, no. I hope the young lady here gets better. We'll see if it's repaid. Thank you. Good. She walks off. And turn back to me. Does it feel better? It's actually stinging quite a lot. <laughs> Give it some time, it'll ease. She didn't exactly have the gentlest of hands, but gentler than the hands I felt recently. It's, it's because we couldn't pay better that she probably wasn't the gentlest. I think she's just more used to getting things done quickly and efficiently. 
Maybe I'll see that. We'll be home soon, don't worry. Are you good? She, I mean, she basically just falls asleep. Just gently place her down. Not mm. on the setting wound. <laughs> well, it's handy. Well, basically awesome. anything on her left side, which is broken bones. Like, her right side seems fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll just put her on the right side so she just sleep like that. Do you guys do anything else while waiting around for wherever the hell Jane's got to? Um, I'll sort of speak to you once she's fallen asleep and say, so the regulators, they seem to want to get rid of the slavers. They do. We want to get rid of the slavers. We definitely do. Lincoln wants to get rid of the slavers. Sounds like you're proposing a team up. Well, they said they didn't have enough. They weren't powerful enough yet, but perhaps if we banded together, we could at least stop one problem. That, I think that's what they're currently working on, trying to get in enough favours that they can pull in enough resources for it. I don't think it's just for that. No, they did want to bring, what was that, sense of law to... Yes, bring it, bringing law, lawfulness back to the wasteland. Yes, their law is a little bit harsher than I'd like, but I appreciate what they're trying to do. They've got a good principle, but they're not... They're not as ethical as they could be. Perhaps like in the bunker, if we could... If we could prove ourselves powerful enough, perhaps we could form a council. Maybe. Between the settlements. <coughs> yes, so some sort of establishment so everyone is able to be fairly represented. And we can all, as a grand community in, in this, this world, share resources around and, and... And shear off the sharper edges of their harsher laws. Yes. A, a, a community, a, a, a new bunker, but for everyone on the surface. Well, not for everyone. No. Oh. The, the people that are first. worthwhile. Hmm. It's worth speaking to Lincoln, I think. Yes. See what he thinks of it. Yes. I know he hasn't had as many problems with them, but I know. If I was next door to them, there'd be problems for me. Yes. And if we can make some sort of agreed upon the community then it could ease tension and, and make it easy to resolve disputes rather than just bringing out the guns. And potentially also make us powerful enough to deal with the street kings. Maybe. They don't seem interested at the moment but with the backing of all the communities perhaps. Perhaps even the street kings would admit that they're not completely self-sufficient and be open to sharing. Mm -hmm. When Maddie wakes up, we should ask if she saw anything in their registers about trading with the Street Kings. Maybe. I imagine if anyone is, it's going to be the Regulators. The Arcadians definitely were. Yes, well... They were at least accepted. They were let to enter, but from what we've seen and heard, they've never asked anything in return. I don't trust the Arcadians. Never trust someone who doesn't want anything in return. Or the trust and murder our people. Oh, that. <sighs> yeah, that was that. Um, <laughs> that was oh, that. Maddie is not going to appreciate the fact that so many people died while she was gone. No, but she'll appreciate the fact she wasn't one of them. Good point. Good point. Has anyone from the bunker actually died? 70 yeah. people died. When? In the lockdown, when the oxygen was cut off. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like last week. <laughs> Jones is like. It maybe ha yeah. happened off screen. Jones wasn't directly responsible, so does it even count? That's what happens when Jones is around. He tried to rescue us. Okay. Question: In the first incident, how many people died? Was it more or less than seventy? Do you have to like one up this now? <laughs> He's <laughs> definitely did not kill seventy. This one right. happened you because Jones wasn't performing maintenance. He was busy trying to cut through the door. He was busy poorly. really poorly performing maintenance on that door. <laughs> <laughs> now he's been out of it. He's been outside. So all the new maintenance people are useless. <laughs> so you guys, eventually, you, yeah, you get led back. Um, you walk back through. Uh, yeah, so this guy walks up to you, sort of quite a big, beefy guy, very calloused hands, clearly, you know, Works with heavy stuff all day. He just claps his hand heavily on your shoulder. Pfft. Jones, right? Thanks for the meal. Who are you? You hear that, Jones? 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 Uh, Sebastian. Pleasure. 
Pleasure to meet you. I shake his hand. It's like twice as not it's not like twice as size as yours. But it's, it's significantly like, larger. What it's do like you full do of muscle. Sebastian. Me, me. I I work in uh, Shaponics. <gasps> oh great! You should tell me all about that. Sure. What do you want to know? <laughs> Everything. Well. Tell <laughs> me about the ooze. <laughs> <laughs> You never live in that down. Make a, make a manipulation persuasion, but I'll give you a plus two bonus because this guy uh, likes fed. you, was fed by you, <laughs> according to him. So I'm guessing by the end of this we're going to find out that when the sheep die they cut them up to leather and then glue them together to make leather armour. <laughs> they make the glue from their bones. <laughs> Gotta use every piece. From their sheep hooves. That's, oh my god! He loves you. That was a great meal. Yeah, he loved that meal. That's a critical success. That was five! Um, That's a critical success, isn't In it? fact, he's even going to give you some sheep. Yeah. <laughs> he so, just pulls one out of his pocket. You, you found the new farmer for the bunker. He pulls, like, this thing out of his pocket. And it's like, um, sort of two knives with, like, a bit of metal at the back. And he starts describing, like, how uh, a couple of times a year he goes up to the sheep and he like grabs them and he puts them between his legs and he like hacks off all the wool. But he does it and he basically teaches you how to shear. <laughs> By teaching him, he goes through how to shear. He's not the most eloquent of men. That's right. But I you know, know. apparently there's a bunch of sheep out there with you know, no wool on. Just grows. They make clothes out of it. Does he tell you about breeding them? No, I mean, if you ask. Yeah. It's like. He did ask for everything. He's like, I swear I've never done any breeding with him. <laughs> I'm not from New Zealand. Or Wales or Victoria or whatever. Um, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's not my thing, uh, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> but um, you just, like, you just you put them together and it kind of happens. Does not matter how many males there are? Well, you know, one lucky bastard can do it, but... Um, you just leave a few of the males around. I, ideally, like, you know, if you want, like, uh, like, really, like, big and strong, healthy sheep, you get rid of all the weak males. So, it's like, then you just have, like, the big males make more. I see. Or, like, if you want something else, like, they were experimenting for a while to try to get ones that were, like, extra, like, wooly. So they just got, like, the wooliest males. <laughs> Kept me in a job. Shink, shink. You're describing selective breeding from a bogan. <laughs> <laughs> so you just leave them there with like a with a cast of goo next to them and. Uh... <laughs> yeah, goo. Oh, that's a goo. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, do you want a drink? Yeah, we got drinks around here. And he goes in a room, comes back, and uh, <laughs> brings you like um, like a, it's like a wooden mug. It's like filled with something clear. I drink it. Is this moonshine? Basically, Sweet. the roll stamina minus two. <gasps> Shit urine would have been way better. I didn't say what else it was. Oh my god. <laughs> One success. Well, you like take this big gulp and it's strong. Like. Stronger than what we're and, and, and you go to like, and you swallow it and you're like. <laughs> and you go to take a single and he actually stops you and he's like. Wow. I was expecting you to be able to do that. Hey, Lucas, guys! He <laughs> <laughs> took it straight, straight from the car. Like, so this group of like guys goes over, with like another couple of others just patting you on the back. And and now you have status two. <laughs> between them, like if you keep asking questions about how like cheaper points works. Yes, yeah, so I'm. I'm gonna keep doing that, and I'm gonna keep them drinking and happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, you. Hear, whether or not you can do it is a different story. Yeah. You have to spend the XP, but um, yeah, you hear it all. Yeah. You basically, you've got it with all the farm hands, and um, they're happy I'm to talk. How happy here? Would they come work for me? <laughs> well, they're currently pretty happy if you know. Yeah. Um, I'm expecting Joseph to play. 
people like me. I'm home. <laughs> so uh, I think one of your aspirations was to socialise out of work. I'm going to count I already this. got that. I have made a friend now, though. Yeah, you've made a friend. Sweet. Sebastian. I can't believe friendship is so easy. You just buy food. And yeah. ask about sheep shagging. Mm-hmm. And then down both. It works in real life. That's how I make down a whole mouthful of moonshine. There you go, kids. That's basically how you do make friends. <laughs> so, buy them food, talk about sheep mating rituals, and then go back home. <laughs> yep, that's 90% of my friendships. <laughs> right there. I didn't live in Darwin. <laughs> A great new time because we're going on break fairly soon, aren't we? Yeah. Oh god, this is um, great. So yeah, you eventually get told everything and more than you wanted to know. Um, uh, yeah. So what are you guys doing? You guys, well, you guys, uh, you hear upstairs some raucous laughter and stuff like that. Well, I've suggested that we go find um, Lincoln to speak to him about creating this greater community or just helping to eliminate the throat. If, we do that. I'll, actually, I'll get you to do it uh, with sympathy. If you want to do that, I'll see you with Maddie so she's safe. Okay. I'm sure she'll be safe, but not a bad idea to keep an eye on her. I, I no. don't want anything to happen right when you've just... It's too hard to that. tell. I sort of reach to where my pistol usually is to give it go. I'm sure she'll be fine. Hands um, bag. <laughs> Touches and hilt of knife. Yes, be careful with those. Mm. Uh, so you go to find Lincoln and... A look of concern on my face, I can't look at my shoulder at Scott. <laughs> and we will take a break there. Huzzah! Uh, we'll see you after the break in 10-15 minutes. See you guys. See you all soon.
right there. Now they're all Back to calisthenics class with Cody. Um, <laughs> All right, let me go get my little title. <laughs> He's wearing the title, don't worry. Um, but thank you for joining us again. No um, pants, only leotards. <laughs> Not even that half the time. Uh, so, um, Lucas is with all his big farmer mates uh, having a drink, being taught how, how uh, animals mate. Um, you what? <laughs> Um, some of them are brought out like uh, suits to them. No, <laughs> no, no fairies exist. Uh, that we've found yet. I'm sure they exist. Plenty of communities to find. Yeah, if people are helping me write the world, they could have a fairy themed community. <laughs> a group of raiders or something. But yes! No. no. Uh, which, remind me, if you want to, join me on Discord and tell me what's what. Anyway, uh, you are going to find Lincoln. Yes, or attempt to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, roll manipulation so, uh, street lines. Oh, actually, we've got things in there. Oh, my. <laughs> One success. I was pretty certain you were picking that up because it was cold. I was like, <laughs> that. It's just. It's my success. <laughs> um, it takes you a little while, but eventually you do find him. Um,. <clears throat> He's sitting down, uh, leaning against the wall, uh, talking to a woman who looks about his age. You want I to sort of get near and sort of get his attention, see if he tells me to go away, knowing that he's with a lady. And he looks up, he looks pretty tired. He's like, oh, hey Sam. Lincoln. What can I do for you? I just want to let you know that we've stopped by for the night. Uh, if you've got some time in the morning, so I've got some things I'd like to discuss. Ah, uh, sure, sure. Uh, is there anything planned in the morning? Doing any tasks? Ah, uh, everything. But no, uh, dawn, I can wait. Alright, excellent. See you then. So. <laughs> that was a nice, easy conversation. It really was. <coughs> I'll head back down and fight some of the rest at this point. Yeah. So head off, you sort of see him sort of put his head on the woman's shoulder and just basically fall asleep. Aww. Adorable. Um, and, um, yeah, so you guys all, well, you three will gather with Maddie and rest up. Uh, I don't know what they're doing out there, but I'm trying to get some rest. I still want your friends and so they leave. Yeah, you, they're not even, they wouldn't let you. <laughs> You've just trapped there forever now. Roll I don't a, think those are friends. Roll another stamina minus two. <coughs> nah. Um, yeah, uh, eventually you wake up in one of the side rooms. Uh, Do I still have my arm? Yeah, you have everything. So you have your arm <laughs> cut off. The only thing you're missing was used in the demonstration of sheep breaking. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are missing a couple of hours of time, but apart from that, you're fine. Ah, uh, you get up and go find them. Oh, yeah, uh... That headache, though. By the way, if you get up, it's we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> you may be having a nap. Um, <laughs> so the light of dawn starts to come through. Uh, this place has got the big open glass at the top. And some of them smashed even then. So you're woken up by light. Even downstairs. Yeah. 
And I sort of get up and just open the door quietly and check and see if Waters is awake yet. Hey, Sam. I'm going to see Lincoln. Did you want to stay here? I'll check Maddie to see if she's still asleep. Uh, she is. I'll wait here. Okay, I'll be back soon. Alright. Maddie wakes up and don't <laughs> <laughs> so you head off, uh, find Lincoln. He's waiting in the upstairs sort of uh, eatery area. Is he by himself? Uh, yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's eating some food. He doesn't have his lady mm-hmm. of the night. He's probably his partner. <laughs> no, the lady of the day. <laughs> I thought it was Scotland. I think he called Lincoln okay. repeater for nothing. <laughs> or at all. No, it was Lincoln power. <laughs> So I slide up across from him. Yep. Ah, oh, Sam, yeah. Oh, good morning. Good morning. So, uh, what's this thing you wanted to talk about? Um, so we went to see the regulators. Got our person back. Ah, oh, it's, it's good to hear. It went as well as could be expected. Okay. That's cryptic, but good on you. Well, she's alive. We're here. Yeah. Better than a lot of our dealings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The regulators expressed when I spoke to them about slavers and their stance on the law mm. that they wish they could deal with it, but they're not powerful enough yet. Yeah. You're not powerful enough yet, enough yet either, and neither am I. Well. But yeah. perhaps if we all banded together, we could be rid of them once and for all. Ooh, that's a big ask. Maybe others. Maybe some of the Hulk. Mm. Now on the other side of town. Yes, but I'm sure they've got convoys that have had people taken. I'm sure there's other people out looking for revenge. Uh, we've got the radio tower here. True, true. I mean, they're not the only group of slavers, so it's probably we do them a favour, they do us a favour later. Mm. No, the way around. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's a lot of risk. It's not something we need to do right now, but it's something worth considering, I think. Yep. I don't know, if it goes wrong, we'll be the people who face the, whatever wrath they throw out. Um, and even if it goes right up, they might fall on us. You know, once from elsewhere. I'll ask around, though. I'm sure there'll be some people who'll be keen. Mm. Whether or not we can afford to spare is the question. But... Truth be told, whether or not we can stop on this. If we can't spare them now, we might not have the choice. Yeah. Weeks, months down the track. Yeah, true, true. True. Well, I know there's at least a few people here who were taken by them, who bought back. I definitely want to go, but... I don't know. It's like... We don't really have a military or... Yeah, a security force would be about shepherds. I know our shepherds would be handy, especially if we get those rifles with the scopes you promised us. Hopefully that'll be done by the time we get back. Hmm. Look, if we had them and a chance to practice, oh, we could probably um, spare some guys at a distance. Hmm. Don't know about getting in close, but... I imagine if we present the regulators with a, a viable option, they will help us as much as they can. Yeah, hope so. Do you have any other allies that might join this fight? Uh, the people down in Marion have been hit as hard as us. Um, it's a large group of traders down there. I don't think they have any particular standing force. Uh, but each of the caravans has their own guards. Some of the trading companies as well. Uh, does mean there's normally at least a few mercenaries hanging around. If we do this, and we succeed, perhaps we can look at building alliances much more strongly with other communities as well. Yeah, I mean, then the uh, radio used to work. We see a lot more responses back. So many of those people have gone dark. Mm. <coughs> and with broken equipment, perhaps their radios have stopped working too. I hope that's it. Um, there's something else I need to let you know. Yeah. Our settlement, we had some Arcadians visit. Mm-hmm. Uh, they seemed friendly his, enough. His eyes are hard enough, yes. 
they came and introduced themselves, we showed them around and they left. Mm -hmm. Some time later they came back and attacked us. And it was a hard fight. We won it. But they are dangerous. Mm. Make a presence persuasion. Minus four. Mm -hmm. Add willpower. And go. <laughs> Two successes. He seems to. He sort of says, um. But there's some people who have their suspicions, like I do. I'll, I'll make sure if they come in here, they'll keep a bit of a subtle eye on them. But. They've helped too many people here over the years. They helped me when I asked them find the radio equipment for you. They told us that was, uh, that you'd done that for them, uh, for us. You'd okay. sent them on their way. Yes. Mm. I wouldn't tell you this if it went for the fact it could become helpful to you to be aware of it. Well, I appreciate it. We'll keep a bit of a closer eye, but yeah. I tell everyone here. I'm not sure what changed. But something changed between when they left and when they came back. I don't know. I don't know. But there was a, another with them. <coughs> didn't look as well kept. I saw him. I didn't see him alive, I'll put it that way. Mm. No, I'm um, not sure what you mean. I mean, I know that someone doesn't look well kept, look like, but doesn't ring any particular bells in my head. He looked like one of them, but different. And blood stains on his clothing. Seemed old, not freshly from when he was killed. Hmm. It's interesting. I might ask some of the, the shepherds, some of the, the ones I can trust on this matter. There are others I trust with my life, but you know, when your when your brother's gone and joined them, or the like, or you know, your cousin or a childhood friend, uh, you're know, hardly about to think poorly of them. Yes, I understand. One of them, in their hand, had some kind of energised weapon as well. I guess the question to ask is if they're peaceful, why do they have weapons? They always present themselves with none. So sort of Jeff looks over his shoulder at just the butt of his rifle. <clears throat> but they've always pre presented themselves as unarmed. That is true. Um... I mean, they're not the only group who walks around unarmed, but... Uh, Others do? Yeah. Mm, don't mm. think I've seen anyone else. Ah, uh, you'd know if you saw them. I imagine so, if I would stand out. Yeah. Are they dangerous? Nah. No. No, the, the, the larrikins. Um, how do I... If you're not familiar with them, how do I explain them? Well, unarmed to start with, I was asking. <laughs> yes, they, um... Trouble telling stories and telling people of the news and histories. Hmm. They're generally very well respected. Um, bots. <coughs> Have they ever tried to seduce you? Um, you tell me. <laughs> I assume you don't that. <laughs> You'll recognise them. They have uh, wide brimmed hats, but they have corks on them. That's why. <laughs> corks? Hmm. Um, well, they're like little bits of wood. It keeps the oh. flies away. It's sort of a signature of theirs. Strange. Mm. Well, if they're friendly, I'll be sure to introduce myself if I see one. Oh, they are. They're very friendly. Um, don't... Don't believe everything they say too quickly. If... Some of their stories are a bit... Ah, tall. Oh, but a, a bit like Jones. Him, I can't imagine him having any sense of humour in that regard. But they'll tell Some you. Stories. They'll tell you if um, at the end of it, they like just to see if they can get people to buy it. They stir people up, but if it's a joke, they'll tell you. Hmm. Well, I'll leave you to it. We've got to get our people back anyway. So. Good. I've got a lot of work to do today. Yeah. 
when I see you next, I'll see what we've come up with. Yep. And see if maybe there's a way ahead to solve these problems. Sure. Uh, if you can send, um, tell James uh, he sends note. Mm. <clears throat> oh, sorry, that was a bit of a solid bit of food there. Um, if you tell Jones that uh, if he wants to buy um, some sheep, just let us know in advance so we can make sure we have some good breeding stock ready for him. Sure. How much advance do you need? Just not even a day. Nah, but that should be. Fine. You guys are normally in and out pretty quick. I'm sure we could stay if needed, but mm. I don't know if he's planning on taking any with him now. I hope not. We've already got some to uh, take back with us. From what I hear, not in the state he was in last night. I'm not going to ask anymore. Mm. Always seems to get himself in trouble. Yeah. <coughs> Alright, well, I'll see you later, Lincoln. Thank you. Yeah. Go up and head back downstairs. Uh, Speaking of Lucas, or are we going to me? Back to you. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting with Maddie. Mm. I assume, like, she's asleep with, like, her head on my lap, so she has something of a cushion. Uh, there would have been something you could have put as a cushion. Okay. Um, Not a brick. <laughs> if you felt the need to like remove like I don't know, some bit of clothing and put your legs there, then... nah, it's fine. She can have another cushion. But eventually, it's that returns. My cooing sounds throwing your hair. <laughs> Who's like, a pretty girl? You're a pretty girl. You're safe now. Don't worry. Your skin doesn't burn. I want it. <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> I'll make darts for my dress. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, looks like you're awake. How's Maddie doing? She's still sleeping. I think she needs the rest. Yes, but we should probably get her back as soon as we can as well. Oh, Plenty we of time to rest when we return. It's not too far from here. We should. I, I think give it at least a little bit more, at least to find Lucas. I guess I'll go do that. <laughs> <laughs> now speaking of Lucas. Um, so you're blackout asleep, vaguely, nonsensically dreaming, slightly lucidly, and you just hear in your head, time to wake up, Mr. Jones. <coughs> and you sort of start yourself awake, and you see a man in, very large man, in brown robes with a hood across his face in a very dark room. It's me. His hands on the side, his sort of malformed hands on the side of your head. <coughs> see ya. Who are you? I'm Seer. It's time for you to wake up. Your friends are leaving. I look at my arm. Is my gun split? Yep. I stand up and I leave. You, you feel a hand on your shoulder. <laughs> he says, I know Arcadian technology when I see it. Good work. And he sort of just pushes you out. I leave. <laughs> Hmm. Excuse You're me, making... have you seen Lucas Jones anywhere? The man from last sense. night? You... Uh... Oh, he just got stepped out of the Sears tent. Oh, thank you. Jones. Did him go in? What? what the hell were you doing in there? Walking. Well, we're getting ready to go. Alright, I'll be back. Where are you going now? Food. Right. Well, where are you going? We'll meet you there. Uh, I'm looking for food. I actually know where I'm there going. There is that big barbecue out in the Sears 10, I think. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's like in the central communal cooking place. Right. Mm -hmm. I had to always stop. Yep. I'll head back down to get the other two and. And then we'll head back. Meet up upstairs. See. So, my weapons on the way. You head over there and you see, like. Um... Uh, actually, I've learnt from last time. First, I head to some shop, doesn't matter what, and I trade for one coin worth of supplies. <laughs> yes. You have one coin worth of supplies. Alright. And then I go get food, and then I trade a little bit of my supplies for the food. So you get to the food, and you sit down and start organising it. You see like a, a group of like uh, four people on the other side whisper together and say something to Anne. She brings over a plate of food and it's like, um, Thank you from last night from those who are there. Thank you. I remember those people. Yep. And I start eating. They look pretty nondescript. Yep. Four beautiful young women waiting to you like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Mood. <laughs> I can't believe Lucas is just an ace. <laughs> well, why care about women when there's food? <laughs> I mean, but, you're right. No, right. Yeah. <laughs> I think oh, I can make these jokes. Um, so yeah, you get the food. You guys 
head up. Have rations or whatever. Head up to the main area where we're expecting farm giants. Oh, that was, that was where you would have found him. Oh, okay, that, that is up there. Okay. Yeah, the Sears tent is just inside the doors. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yes. Gently escorting Maddie. Alright. Have something to eat and then we'll head off. Yep. So, yeah, you guys head off. Uh, you do see the, the Sears is standing in the shadow of the tent that's open. It's the tent with all the, the made out of that uh, brown material with the, um, you know, the, the bone chimes around the outside and the line. It's just hood over the face, just watching. You don't get a clear look at the face. I smile at me because I don't remember them from last time. So look over and be confused. Mm. Bloody hell, he's big. He was the one who gave me the fortune last time. Be a better fighter by the looks of him. I'm sure he does what he loves. Mm. Perhaps. We should head back. By the time we get back in next time, hopefully Daryl's ready as well. Hopefully. So handsome and brave. Cut <laughs> <laughs> one person in after the laser gun. Um, so yeah, you guys head out the front. <clears throat> Give the hat to James, who's always on patrol on the top. <laughs> yeah, he's... It's conveniently every single time we go past. Yeah, you guys already arrived during daylight hours at the Bird Village. Yeah. It makes sense that the guy who's on day shift is always there. Especially the day supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> Weekends aren't really so much a theme no more. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. he's clearly still waking up and you see he's like stretching out like his old bones. Could do with some calisthenics. What is this me with my creepy bones? <laughs> I say hello and goodbye from every time because he's my bestie in this village. Aww. <laughs> Yeah, you spend more time talking to Lincoln than anyone. Um, yeah, but... So you guys leave. He's a tool to a greater purpose. James is my friend. He's there for me when I need him. <laughs> I assume. <laughs> but yes, we leave. Uh, so you take Maddie back? Yes. Is that what your plan is? Uh, yeah. yeah, survival minus one. Am I just playing survival? Yeah. Well, with survival minus one. Uh, so you guys start headed back, um, and you're most of the way uh, when um, you start hearing a heavy thump on the ground. Then another coming one coming from ahead or behind. Sort of to the side. Sounds like it's coming in your direction, though. So this is uh, as you approach the the roundabout. So um, you'll be headed south in a moment. Does it sound gek heavy? Quite possibly. We just hide. Sure. Yeah, I'll just sort of signal to get into the building. Dex and Stealth, if you Yeah, let's we'll do that. Mm -hmm. I've had one forever. No, never. Let me go great king. Swear to God. No success. Two successes. One success. Mm -hmm. uh, so you two. Well, you'll think you've hired it successfully. Um, actually, it's... Do Maddie. I need to actually... I don't know what's that. She's better than Sam. Oh, uh, <laughs> I think it's almost impossible not to. I mean, there's not a... I mean, it's an incredible power. Just depends on when I I'm just, these things I picked up a brick and held it in front of my face. <laughs> I am one with the brick. I am so emotionless. Uh, yeah, you keep on hearing thump, thump. <laughs> That's um, a high intimidation score. <laughs> eventually you um, see these, I think, yeah, you've seen smaller versions of them sort of in the undercover area at the Burn Village. But these three very large red kangaroos, isn't it? Um, tall building, just... Mega for the kangaroos. And as you go, you feel like, the rocks around you vibrate. So they have music no, they don't. Oh, but yes. you can see. They left them at home. They're in the pouches. <laughs> um, the two of them have pouches. The larger one at the front doesn't. Ah, oh, so it's it's the buck with the females, right? So he's out with his ladies of the morning. <laughs> so he's doom, doom, and as they go past, and you sort of see uh, one of the, the females sort of sniff the air and look over in your direction. At that point, I was probably just so amazed. I was like, just looked out at my hiding spot. But it just looks forward, back forward, it's, they just don't ignore you. They just ignore you. 
I'll sort of step out and watch them a bit. Hmm. Imagine the meat on those things. Whispered. (laughs) (laughs) They keep they keep going south in the direction of um yeah, the bunker. Direction you need to go. They're not moving to they're moving at a fair pace. If we kept pace, would we keep up with them, or...? Uh, you'd have to be pretty much jogging to keep up with them. Okay. They don't look like they're even trying. Well, we can just keep walking, and if they happen to go to the bunker, we can... Well, they didn't seem interested in me, but... Bunker, come in. Yes? Strange creatures heading your way. Uh, very large, bouncing on two legs. Just... They don't seem... Immediately dangerous, but be on alert. What does bouncing mean? <clears throat> like jumping, but with a tail as well. Okay, we we're ready. I think. Um, Call to the tower. They should have eyes on it. We set up a post. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's very confused. I mean, I'm very confused. <laughs> So you know all the memes that are going around where it's just like a cat but with like giant swole legs? That's what he's picturing. He's probably not that far off. <laughs> it's like these are like the, the spawn kangaroo. Um, so yeah, they make a fair pace as they go south. We will just follow them at normal pace. Yep. Um, assuming that they'll radio us in mm-hmm. any updates. Um... Oh, I would call back and back. Unless they attack, don't engage. <laughs> Just changes the number of dice. Ah, uh, that was to see if people, someone was going to be a smart person. And um, you guys head south. Eventually you see, uh, yeah, your fake settlement out the front. And everyone's basically standing to outside of it. And you see at the water, where the waterfall falls out, you see these three creatures, well you see two of them drinking and the third one's looking around, and they sort of switch. Hmm. Guess they wanted a drink. Yeah, well... Where's she going? <coughs> Maybe we should wait for them to leave first. Maybe. We just saunter up to where everyone else is. Torrent, goes. activate! <laughs> <laughs> You're behind the waterfall, it's not gonna work! <laughs> Is it? can't fly through water. <laughs> World's worst turrets. Oh, they had that little... I can't see that far. Yeah, it's it's more the, the... It's not a straight path. And there's a waterfall. Yeah, that's fine. I assume we've just, like, joined rank with, like, the rest of everyone just standing and watching these giant things. Yeah. Really confused. We're just like, yeah, they're really big, aren't they? Yeah. Hello there. To them? Yes. It's okay. It's okay. Don't mind us. Are you trying to walk past them or sort of... Or are you just trying to... I'm just... I like animals. It's it's my thing. (laughs) Really, you're gonna let those sheep down, aren't you? Yeah. Not too much. Everyone. Manipulation animal can. uh, Mine's two. He's gonna have a flock and grain adventure. Okay. It's probably one of you one dice for you. I'm gonna add wolf out. One success. Very nice dice trays. Please try to roll in them. Um, That's why I used this one instead. That one is a magnet. So you go up with your sort of hand extended. Palm first. And um. Punch him. And I no longer have enough. Sort of steps forward and starts sniffing. How close do you get? I stay there and let it come to me. It doesn't seem particularly interested in coming too close to you. We should team them and lend it right. But you, um, well you have seen the ones in under the in the burned village you did see had stuff. Like <sighs> like rigging more for like packs than anything else. I was sort of very slow, like half step at a time, move forward with my hand outstretched until it looks like it's going to run or fight and then I'll stop. Uh, it's, it's very hard to get a read on. You don't know these animals. Um, uh, but yeah, you get about two metres away. Oh, uh, no, probably further than that. About three or four metres away. You see it sort of tensile, just that little bit. 
You see it shift its weight from its legs more to its tail. I, I guess for that to keep. I just crouch down a little bit in front of it. <laughs> about, about foot height if it kicks. So. <laughs> no, no, just, just, you know, if you don't want to threaten the animal so you get lower and don't look intimidating. It's already bigger than you. <laughs> yeah, but have you seen my presence and <laughs> in intimidation yes. scores? I'm like um, three giant kangaroos by myself. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, uh, yeah. So can you roll? Yeah, roll check again, thanks. Good shit. The um, manipulation animal can. Even the dice check. One success. You think you're probably about as close as you can get um, without it sort of responding. I'll wait there with my hand outstretched. Just hoping that my proximity it calms down after a little while. Mm. Um, it probably does just a little bit, but uh, at some point, and one of the other ones starts paying attention to you as well. I do the exact same thing. It's like <laughs> um, eventually you're like. <laughs> uh, eventually, hey, they, they do seem to relax around you. Oh. At one point, someone walks out from the waterfall, and someone's just like, and they're like, turn back around, and go inside. Um, but yeah, the, uh, so it's like one of the males and one of the females are sort of looking at you, and they sort of look like they've shifted their weight back onto their feet. The third one's drinking. Awesome. You see its ears twitching as it's drinking. I sort of skirt around them, keep them the same sort of distance and go up the water and just start drinking from it as well. Um, yeah, as you do that, they sort of move a little bit further away, but they start to calm down. And I will run and jump on the back of them. <laughs> okay, you are? To ride! <laughs> no. Go. For the bunker! <laughs> no. Do we know anything about kangaroos nope. no books no nothing uh, old law intelligence academics that would be that's, I feel like that should have a penalty didn't mean didn't mean it, it wasn't excellent boxes um boxes how do you get anything inside them and then close them off there, there is like you do remember like one section of like your daughter's book Actually, it's not even your daughter's book. It's like a different one that you borrowed for a little while. So it swap seas. And it's like, you know, see Skippy Hop, Hop Skippy Hop. And there's like an animal that kind of looks, you thought it was a rat, but it might be one of these. Skippy down the well. <laughs> see Skippy Twitch. Timmy's down the well, you know. So now I think they're all called Skippies. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That would actually make sense. What have I done? Sort of quite a lover. I think these are skippies. I read about them once. What's a skippy? They seem very they, friendly with a young child. They hop. Yes. That's all I remember. They were. We can see them hop. <laughs> they sure were. I think we're meant to encourage them to hop. I ah! <laughs> I think they can handle it on their own. Doing anything else? Um, I'll try approaching again now that they seem a bit calmer. As you approach them, um, yeah, I'll roll one more time. Uh, one success. Yeah, it goes tense again. <coughs> uh, one of the one closest to you sort of moves so it's facing you, and you can see it put its weight back on its tail. The other two look a bit more relaxed. I'm assuming it's the alpha male who's like the leading back. Ah, he's, he's called me. Me and him go way back to like three seconds ago. <laughs> uh, he is, yes. Oh, is that, I thought you said the male, one of the females, one of the male seemed relaxed. Yeah. yeah. yeah as, you, as you approach, it's changed. Okay, so now the two females seem They're relaxed. drinking and yeah, he's... Okay. He was also the first one to drink. Okay. So he's probably had his feel. Um, have they sort of, since they hopped back away from me a little bit, have they moved away from the walkway now? Uh, only a little bit. 
But you think that people could, if they were cautious, walk behind you, wouldn't be. If they were as cautious as you, that probably shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, as well. So, get a run through. Quiet. Come on, if we go gently and quietly, single file, we should be able to get past. And I'll sort of hold my hand up and sit down in the ground in front of the kangaroos. Yep. I gently lead Maddie back around behind. Yep. You watch as um, all the people start filing in. Single um, file. Single file. Hugging the wall. Give it a little wide. Hmm? Lucas just walked. Being awesome. Well, Lucas isn't actually a problem in this case. Um, you see one of the techs walks in. Oh no. Had with a toolbox. And um, the light of the morning sun glints, glints off of it, and just you see like this beam of light, reflected light, just go across the male's face, and it rears up. <sighs> ah, good initiative. <laughs> oh god. Uh, Fifteen. Fourteen. Okay. I am staying out of this. Do you, do you know what, are you going to get directly involved? Are you basically these questions? Are you going to run, or are you just going to do anything else? Uh, if he's trying to attack, I'll just get out of the way of it yeah. and still show that I'm not being hostile. Jane, it's um, um, if I can, I'll turn around and slap that guy in the face. That <laughs> blind that he doesn't even realise that he's sort of. Um, really you see him rear back. And you think that you've probably got a chance to act before it does. Yeah, I just get out of the way. Whoa, 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 whoa my hands up and get back and show that I'm not threatening. Um, yeah, you see it sort of like just kick out with one of its legs, but it doesn't like fully kick. It feels like, you know, Threat. threatens you and it sort of hops partially forward into your space. Yeah, and I sort of keep, keep my hands up, keep walking back. It does that sort of half walk, half kick thing that they sometimes do. And, um, the Irish dancing. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> no, no arms. Um, it's sort of moving into like the uh, ready to posture fight position. I'll sort of keep moving backwards but start moving away, like move around so people can still get up behind up the waterfall path. Okay. Get to make one more manipulation and we'll handling check at negative two. <sighs> well, at negative two. Negative three. <laughs> no. Here we go. What's your defense? Um, I've got plus six to kangaroo. Six Your defense is on first page, you know. Ah, right, uh, five. I've got, I've got plus two of my armor, I believe. No, it doesn't affect the defense. Yeah, right. it only affects five, when you take damage. So he hops forward and breaks down, like kicks forward and tries to cap you in with its claws and tear down as they do. Um, it does impact you and begin to tear down. Uh, it does four lethal damage, which will get downgraded partially to two lethal, two dash, no, to two lethal. Because yeah. it's not blue armor. Um, can you make a strength, just straight strength check? Uh, two successes. And you get kicked over backwards, hit the ground. It's like, you don't have time to give them some birth. Anyone else do anything? Yeah, I'm gonna shoot it. I swear cool. to God. It attacked. Like, it's just a woman, right? We would've killed it already. How big is this thing? Like, you're not even up to its shoulder. Okay. When I said it was like the size of a house, like, it's towards the house. Yeah. Like, it's mega fauna territory. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying, is it like 10 feet tall or 26 feet tall? <laughs> it's probably like... It would be like nearly 10, 20. 12 feet. Okay. It'd be like a good three meters, wouldn't it? Ah, oh, jeez, making me look up facts. Three meters? That's nine. No, it'd be about yeah, ten, twelve feet. Yeah. It's a bit hard to tell because it hasn't really. So it'd be like it. two average people stacked on top of each other. Yeah, something like that. It's big. Him a big boy. Like it's you, like you were moving backwards, and it sort of caught you with your feet not properly dug in, so like the impact kicked you back rather than tearing into you. I think you're pretty lucky. Jones. So is this just firearms? Firearms, decks. Sweet, then I'm gonna use a willpower to test my new gun. I really want you to miss. Hopefully it will just go. People are too nice to this animal. If it was a woman, I would have killed it in the evening. I did make a joke about imagine the meat on that thing. I didn't want it to go down like this. 
Fuck like okay, this. Okay, so willpower. I got one success. Oh. <laughs> um, tough kangaroo vibe. <laughs> that sweet, sweet kangaroo leather. Imagine how much of that we can put together. Uh, less than you'd expect, because yeah, Lucas just holds up his hand and goes, "What you put the?" That's on the hand. Oh, yeah, on it. But I don't hold the stabilizer. Just in yeah. case. <laughs> and this, yeah, this bright bluish white bolt just flies out over Sam, hits the kangaroo, the skippy, and um, yeah, just sinks in and just melts part of his flesh. It's still up. Like, it's not a large action. If it was that much of a human, it'd be dead. Yeah. Um, but it looks like it's got really, like, tough hide and skin. And uh, it's really bad. And at that point, yeah, uh, the other two sort of turn around, see what's happening. I just shout, everyone, back to the fences, and I'll start running towards the makeshift walls. Anyone that's slow, sort of grab them and try and pull them through with me. Um, yeah, roll athletics and either strength or dexterity, your choice. I choose strength. They're not gonna flee. Huh? They're not gonna flee. It's an alpha male kangaroo. Two it's not fleeing. Yeah, man. I shot us off. I'm scared. It's getting fucked. It up. doesn't know what a gun is. <laughs> <laughs> it just knows it's in pain. It has to win. Uh, how many? Yeah, it's I an alpha two. male kangaroo. <laughs> um, so you turn around and just bolt off the, the ground, sort of using your know, from sprinter star position. Um, sort of using your close quarters combat skills you run around and between like down a small alleyway uh, and it hops after you and uh, it's hopping mad uh, and hits the alleyway and just crushes into it and you hear one of the sheds get knocked over um, it's right in the tail as it hops over the remains of this crushed area yeah um, I'm gonna just Go on knees to aim better and shoot again. Yeah. Uh, you're not officially aiming, it's yeah. better to take a round, but yeah. Yeah, that's not official aiming, it is. I'm gonna use a willpower though. That's one success again. Nope, it's two successes. <laughs> I'm just shouting, no, Skippy, no! <laughs> <laughs> No, Skippy! No, Skippy! <laughs> uh, so yeah, you hold your hand out from the kneeling position, poof, fire again. Um, some of the people were like, looking over their shoulder, what the hell is he doing? Like, you were just... I am, I am that. <laughs> um, the bolt hits at uh, centre mass this time, it's in that tough uh, area that kangaroos have when the males fight. Um, but you do yeah, see they're built for that. <laughs> but you do see like the skin peel through down to like these deep muscles. You actually see some bone as well. So um, sort of just sloths off. I'm looking for sort of small alleyways, passageways with solid metal as much as possible yeah. just back and wave. You're through. kind of at the point of um, you're at the path now. Unless you're just trying to keep it away from the last stragglers. Yeah, basically. I'm just trying to sort of go around <coughs> uh, Dabby Desk Dex Athletics again. Uh, two successes. Why do you do these things? What do you mean? You shut it off. <laughs> he didn't! No, it was a different no, no, no. I, I, I'm gonna be fair. If you guys just left, waited for about like yeah. half an hour, they would have just drunk and walked off. We should have just ignored <laughs> them. <laughs> uh, I could have had three now. What did you get again? They attacked. Uh, um, so yeah, you run through some area again. Uh, it seems to have learnt and hops. And you turn around and it gets in front of you. It takes no skipping, no! <laughs> it doesn't seem to understand. You see, its eyes are looking mad of pain. As it reaches, rears back on its tail and just kicks forward with its feet. Uh, yeah. But that takes six lethal damage. But minus two for your armor. So four lethal? Yeah. Um, I think you're in wound penalties now. Well, yeah, I've got almost entire health at yeah. lethal. I've just got two left. Um, so once again, strength check. Minus. Uh, you're currently on your strength. It's just, just a strength check. Left, so you need base strength. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no successes. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, it just kicks you back into the wall of the shed that you were trying to sort of sneak between. <laughs> Impacts and just leave an imprint of in like the sheet metal. Sam shape. Basically, like not quite through it, can't you know, wildy Co style, but pretty close. Um, yeah. Uh, it has a plus two cover bonus because it's sort of behind a bunch of sheds and stuff. So, so just minus seven, two. Yeah. I'm using willpower again. What? It attacked. This is not my fault. God damn it. One success here. So you need to actually hit it. Yeah. More successes, so otherwise you kill it. Uh, one, two, three. What about my cannon now? <laughs> my heat. But my arm. I hope it does. <laughs> so I'm protecting Sam. You don't want to in the corner. Um, so you hit it in the back. And um, though you, you're like down, you look up and you see another one of these bolts. <laughs> it clips the edge of the shed. Uh, and melts the metal there and then comes through and hits this thing in the back across the shoulders. Um, yeah, it turns and panics and um, it turns and you see it start hopping away as quickly as it can. Um, yeah, you see like for, for lucky for it, it's wounds have cauterized, but even then it's probably going to be done at some point. Um, very soon. That poor alpha. Uh, it's hopping away as fast as it can. You see one of its arms is fairly loose at the side. It doesn't seem to have quite the speed as it did before. Uh, the two females start chasing after it. I feel less bad after it tried to kick me to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Sam? I sort of get up, think about pulling my gun to finish off and just shake my head. And just... <clears throat> start very slowly hobbling my way back up the hill, um, stumbling a few times and falling yeah. from my injuries. You look down, your arm is shredded. Yep, along with parts of my body underneath. Yeah, functioning. that arm is written off, you'll have to, yeah, it has to get a new set, which isn't too big a deal for you, but your bunker, no, does, like that. your bunker does have limited supplies, but yeah. But I just saved 100 people from a kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I saved about 100, but yeah. You almost died. Um, Lucas. I'm examining my cannon. To see how overheated and how well it fired. Uh, intelligence like. science. One success. Uh, it feels hot. Like, very, very hot. Yeah. Like, you might have a, a first degree burn on your arm. <laughs> I'm wearing a suit. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Built for heat protection. Uh, I yeah. assume. What? You can assume all you want. Yeah. <laughs> I just sort of stumble out of the makeshift thing and start coughing up some blood as I hold onto the side. And yeah, you've got multiple broken ribs. Start hobbling up to the door. I douse the cannon in the room. Just a little. I assume it's more tight. You can assume what you want. You. I built it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, you put it in the river, me. Uh, you hear, or you feel a, um, like a, a crack through it. <laughs> Shit, I'll take it out. Um, yeah. Called it too quickly. Thought you should have had a word called. <laughs> Quiet, I'm science people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can be a problem. Nah! Not at all. So yeah, you're stumbling back. A couple of people rush, like a couple of the security people rush over to help you. Orders. Get her to the med bay. I imagine you get there before I do. <clears throat> right. I'll tell them you're coming. Yeah. And I just guide Maddie in on the arm again, just like, let's go. Yeah, most people are inside by now. Although there's a certain point of, they're now milling about going, why don't we go back outside? <laughs> now, go fix it. You can grab my cat now, guys. Go ahead. I'm just gonna go in. <coughs> Spray blood all over the floor. <laughs> uh, That's not a bias or anything. Um, yeah, so you guys all make your way inside. Um, you take her to the med lab in ad uh, admin. Mm -hmm. um, they look at basically the most of her wounds are at the point now where time will heal them. Um, her Wound at the back is looked at, and it looks like a bit more antibiotics will help clean it. But it was a really that old woman, really good job. Mm. So, while the infection's down, 
it was properly sealed after that. So she'll have a really nasty looking scar there, but she'll be fine. Oh, good. Then Sam gets there. <laughs> you should have seen the other guy. <coughs> it's a giant kangaroo. Giant skippy. A what? Giant skippy. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk, don't talk. Oh, sit down, sit down. Sit down and then sort of wince in pain as my ribs run against each other. Is it actually a giant skippy or is it just a skippy? No, it's definitely a giant skippy. The other one was talking to kids at X face height. That's a butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe it's a huge kid. Yeah. So yeah, she looks over your wounds, uh, patches up, um, disinfects and uh, stitches up with deep cuts. Um, as to the ribs, She's like, oh. So you yeah, two of you are lethal down ready to bashing. You know, the first aid kit. Ain't no thing. She says, uh, look. Your body's still recovering from a lot of your previous wounds, I think. I think we might have to, um, doctor's orders. You might be, uh, sorry, off active duty for a while. But we have to meet Daryl tomorrow. Understood. So, um, just, just a little nut. I know you kind of want to get back out there, but if you don't give it a couple of days, at the minimum, you'll get killed out there. You're coughing up blood already. I'm pretty sure it's almost gone now. Your blood from your body? Yes. <laughs> You're correct. Yes, I am. She does like an x ray. Um, yeah, it's not gonna be too bad. It's gonna hurt for a real bad, and you've got broken ribs. But like none of the ribs are actually in your lungs or anything like that. As long as it's not the clavicle, you're fine. Every it's, rank cloud, am I it's right? Everything but the cl- it's, it's, it's the clavicle. <laughs> yeah. For reference, that's the collarbone, yeah. and that really fucking hurts if you break them. Because you can't lift your arms. <laughs> So you have a T-Rex fight. <laughs> but my grandfather was a cop, that's what he used to do. T-Rex fights. <laughs> Basically, he was my size, so he's like 6'4". Billy clubbed to the cold bone. Billy clubbed to the cold bone. He was safer than a taser. Not that they had tasers. Not for your cold bone. It'll get better. Because it, it's, it's hardly, it's highly unlikely to be fatal, but it instantly takes someone out of a Just fight. Just walk it off. Because um, you don't have arms, you still have legs. <laughs> Alright, so what do you guys all do now that you're in? I go back to the armory. Yep. I, I assume Dawn lets me in. Still uh, one of Dawn shifts, so yeah. Yep. And uh, I start checking what happened to my candle. <sighs> you haven't shown this to her before, so she. She was here when I built it. I didn't. I thought you built it privately. No, I built it in the armory. I asked her to help, but she was busy working. Yeah, he did it actually. Oh no, she was working on the other, um, other. Oh. She was in the R and D lab. You did it. Yeah, not in the armory. Doing the flesh weave. But um, she looks over it. I don't know why I'm rolling. Um, she says it looks like the the part of the focusing crystal is cracked. Is it fixable? It's just like, I mean, I don't know what it's made out of. You built the thing. I don't know what it's made out of anyway. Yeah. I assume we, the science people, we can work it out. I mean, I don't know. We don't have half the tools we need. Can we replace it with something else usable? Well,. I assume you can fire it without focusing it. I could. Laser shotgun. The awkward silence. <laughs> <sighs> Perhaps I'll need to test this. I take it and I keep the focus, the crack focus on it for now. Yeah. So is this like before when I had the melted bit and I was splitting the shots? Uh, yeah. But that was like that the outside ring had melted. Yeah. It looks like that has cracks. Once you look closer, it looks like that is uh, warped somewhat. But the pressure from it happening multiple times has cracked the, the focusing part. Do I think it will just have the same effect when it splits the beams? Um, 
Let's, let, let's let chance decide. Um, you think it's probably going to be relatively like you're going to two beams? How accurate they are? Should be pretty consistent at least. Yeah. Just put some hot glue on it. It's fine. Get back to the firing range. Hmm. Shoot it once. Spin it. So yeah. <laughs> get a shot collide. Uh, yeah. So you go back. Um, fire it once. <laughs> one goes a little bit to the left. One goes fairly distant to the right. So it's not really useful to aim it to, for two beams then. I remove the focus there. and see what happens when I fire it. Uh, how do you fire it without the focus? In the sense of, I assume, do you have it on your arm? No, I ta- I've taken it back off and I've braced it on the thing I've braced it on yeah. before. Um, yeah, you fire it instead of being like a bolt of uh, stuff. Uh, it does actually look more like a laser weapon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it does. Like do a, it looks like a wide bore laser weapon. I assume it does less damage now that it's wider. Significantly. Damn. All right. Your uh, arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> I pick it up and take it back to the armory. And I do we have any crystals here? Like that I think would be similar in composition to this. Um. Pax crystals. Yeah, Intel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're really valuable stuff. Uh, <laughs> Intelligence science, minus three. I'll use a willpower. Dice is not going well. One success. Um, you do know that you do, the uh, facility does grow some crystals, as okay, you mentioned the Pax crystals. Um, you don't know how they react to whatever this energy weapon is. You don't really know much about energy weapons. Yeah. I got some crystals and I attempt to make another focus. Alright, that will take you a while. Alright. So what do you guys do? Oh. <coughs> I'm going to go debrief with Ella. Yep. Do you take Maddie? If she wishes to come, yes. Uh, yep. I'm saying? I'm skirting the rules of my agreement with the Doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, and tell him I'm going straight home. Mm-hmm. I'm just making a couple of stops on the way. <laughs> so the first stop is I hobble down and drop off the armor in the armory to Dawn. So sorry. She said off duty, not you're gonna have to lay in bed. She's not stupid. <laughs> um, your Dawn's like, ah, oh, what? What did this? A giant skippy. Have you heard of them? No. They're strange creatures. Huge. Must have been 12 feet tall. Every time I tell the story, it's going to get one foot high, by the way. <laughs> she looks and goes, This cuts through your armour really well. And my flesh. <clears throat> Even better. Um, probably, we, yeah, uh, probably, yes. She sort of goes in the back room, halfway through the conversation, comes back. She has like a bit of the bulletproof weave. She's like, Interesting. Well, she has nothing to cut it with. She's, sorry, for some reason I was picturing it in my head. She's like, pulls up the weave and she's like... Could you get me some of this claw stuff from a skippy? Uh, oh, they have claws. I could probably... Yeah, it's a kangaroo! Up. I'm pretty sure yeah, the one that was Like you say, kick it. Yeah. I was assuming like a flat kick? Nope. No, because no, where, where kangaroo kicks, it kicks and it angles the foot down and so it tears. Yeah, I know, but the enemy. when you said it kicked them and crushed them, I assumed it was like a straight kick. Not a claw. No. Yeah. It kicked me into the thing and then came up and clawed me. No, yeah. uh, the, like I described in the first one, I did click and claw it, kick and claw down, but you did have armour that took it. Yeah. Um, if they, they kicked you again, back, part of that you were going to be bleeding out. Your armour wasn't going to work. <laughs> um, um, so she's. Yeah. The one that attacked me <clears throat> looked pretty bad. I imagine it's lying dead around here somewhere. Hmm. We could perhaps send a team out to retrieve it. Yeah, if you could speak to one of the Pathfinder teams, I'd really appreciate that. Do we have more now? We've been gone a few days. Uh, Pathfinder 2 is reunited, but not ready yet. Well, there's four teams as far as I'm aware. So like three and four. I'll send a message out. We'll see if we can get three or four out there. Yeah. Um, and sorry again. Mm. Mm. Look, if something comes out of it, then great. Mm. Yes, it could be valuable. Did dam- you damage anything else of yours? I'll start putting all my weapons on. I think they're untouched. 
Good, good, good. Ah, uh, anyway, I suppose I'll just turn them all in now. Here we go. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, I'm going home to rest. Okay. See you next time. Yep. I go straight down to the R&D lab, <laughs> very slowly. Uh, yep. Um, and just find one of the Boltons there. Yeah. Well, they've been uh, weaponsmithing, but yeah. Oh, uh, that's where I'm going. Yep. Yep. Hey, Bolton! <coughs> Well, a bit of blow off my face. Hey, Bolton. <laughs> hey, Bolton. Uh, <clears throat> how are we going with those scopes? Uh, we, um, it's, it's been pretty chaotic uh, since the R&D lab um, got shut down. Um, mm. They're making the actual glass and trying to focus it. Uh, we've made the housing for it. It's, it's really just a matter of the boffins putting them together and uh, testing them. Mm. Alright, well. Hopefully it goes quick and easy. Mm. Um. Yeah. I hope so. If you've got any free time, any free materials, if you can keep building the rifles that we were working on, keep building the ammunition for them, it might be coming into play soon. He sort of looks up at the, the bit of blood smear on your face. He's like, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. I've been telling everyone I'm going home to rest. Okay. I'm actually going to do it now. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, uh, do you need a hand? No, I'll be okay. See you soon. That's it. You go back climbing up all the stairs. <clears throat> yeah, I'm actually going out for a walk. <laughs> Good I, I, I will just on the way through find uh, security, someone that's not a rookie. Uh, yeah, so you walk up and the rookie security office. There is two security officers, and you hear the rookie one go, "No, no, no! I swear, the bunkers are single level. <laughs> no, if you think about it, there's only stairs that go like a little bit. There's no like large staircases that would be evident in a multi-story bunker." And the, the older guy who's like, "Look, seriously, the bunker is multi-story. Stop going on with this flat bunker stuff." I'm just leaning against the wall, listening. It's like, look, we are literally patrolling the central shaft right now. The guy's like, no, 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 no. My mate explained it to me. <laughs> well, well, rookie, why don't you try some experiments? Look, I have, I dropped a pebble from the top and I could not hear it fall, which means it didn't work. Well, maybe you should try again. <sighs> I mean, so look at the senior officer with a bit of a smirk. He's like, yeah, go. Like, okay. So I will run up these seats. Only a ramp because it's all an optical illusion. And he starts running off, and you see him like a second later on like a high level. <laughs> he runs past. Maybe you should get him some sheet metal. Let him sit at the top and watch him slide the whole way down. Oh, yeah, definitely. I need to do it to put over his head. Um, yes, maybe. He also yes, started going on about how the Arcadians are starting to control people here. Control people. Yeah, chips in brains. How do they get chips in their brains? Immunizations. Ah, maybe. I don't know. Seriously, I'm fairly sure one of the training exercises took him too hard in the head when he was a bit younger. What, a, what do you want? I need a message to Pathfinder Team 3 or 4. Yep. Um, I need to rest. Okay, I'll let everyone... What? What? Actually, that's not you. <laughs> There's a dead Skippy outside. What's a Skippy? It's a giant creature. Uh, did this to me. Okay. Uh, it should be dead somewhere nearby. They need to go and retrieve it if they can, or at least retrieve its claws, parts of it. Preferably the whole thing. Alright, I'll get the word out. Appreciate that, and good luck with that one. <sighs> yeah, you watch us like this, when it's just good. Well, at least his fitness is good. Four floors already. <laughs> or is it one floor? I forget. Oh, don't! <laughs> just, 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 just. I hope, for your sake, I hope it's no flaws. Yes. I'll see you later. Thank you. Clang, 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 clang. It's like, how does he not hear that? He's like, walks so up to the, hearing, he I walks believe. up to, um, like there's only a very low, uh, covering at the end of it, but it is like sheet metal. And he just like pulls out his bat and just goes, bang! <laughs> takes a step back. He's like, hopefully that'll solve it. Ah. Oh, guarantee it won't. Good yeah. luck. And then I actually do go home and rest. <laughs> Your daughter is traumatised seeing you coming so easy. Yeah, I, I try and pull myself together as much as possible. Um, Make sure I have a good cough outside, wipe all the blood off my face. Uh, 
Yeah, your wife knows not to ask and your daughter's too young to fully understand. I fully understand, yeah. So yeah, you see your wife sort of do the Oh yeah, your dad's tired, give him some space. Confirming that the outside's dangerous. Sweetheart, while I'm here, do you still have that book? Remember the hop skippy hop book? Uh I was like, um No Daddy, didn't you borrow that off um, Aunt Kath? Yes. You gave it back then? Oh well, yes, uh turn read it for a while. That's good. She always makes sure you return things. Dad's gonna get some sleep now, okay? Okay. Then Dad gets some sleep. <laughs> Yeah, so you head to uh, at Hello? Yep. Um, with Maddie. And, um, yeah, you're going to. Ah. Hello. So, ah, Maddie! Excellent to see you. So Maddie just sort of sits down looking a little bit dejected. Uh, you two, uh, you two. Uh, sorry, I'm just a bit overwhelming. I was like, that's fine, it's fine. What happens, guy? So we've managed to. I, d- I don't know how he did this. I don't know why he did this. I don't know where it came from. Jones had an energy weapon from somewhere, somehow. I don't know how he got it. Mm-hmm. And he used that to trade for coins. And it was 150 coins that he traded for. Okay. And so we were able to immediately go get her back. <laughs> That's really convenient. Yes. That... This would have saved you lots of adventures on the side. Yes. <laughs> side quests, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, <clears throat> we managed to do that. We also ran into our friend that I've mentioned before, Daryl, from the mm. surface. He was very helpful in, in ensuring that we got a, the correct price for the weapon. Ah, good. I'll have to meet Daryl at some point. Yes, he's wonderful. No, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> I shout from downstairs. He's wonderful. He's I'm not downstairs. Same level. Um, <laughs> Just on a different axis of that. So, yeah. yes, he. Um, so, on. he was very helpful. We then headed off as soon as we could. We headed over. We had a we had a very strange run in. The regulators were attempting to fight with this group that apparently had already been living there, and they were. Uh, there was some sort of territory dispute. I'm not exactly sure, but we got let through because clearly we're the emissaries. Oh, good, good. Glad to see that's respected. Yes. So we got sent through, had to go through a few levels of bureaucracy in order to get Maddie back, but everything was fine, managed to work. Actually seeing inside the worker release program, it, it's strange. Some of them are kept with these collars on their necks. And there are electrical devices on the back. I, I'm not entirely sure what they do, but... Maddie says, uh, they're shock collars and... Um... I hear they have other ones that can um, do worse. Alright, uh, it's it's for in, incentivizing or something. It, they're very strict about. Maddie just gives a little bit of a bitter laugh. <laughs> they're very strict about the work release program. Any transgression, transgression, even something that we would call minor can add a ridiculous amount of time. Maddie mentioned that if someone were to punch one of the staff, then it would add another two years. Well, I mean, that's a long time, but we do that. I mean, we put our prisoners to work and they mess with security. They do you lose an entire day on your sen? Do you add an entire day to your sentence if you are late by one minute? Well, they tend to sleep in the same barracks, so it's not really an issue, but... um. It does seem a bit excessive. Yeah, yeah, a bit excessive. In two years for a scuffle, well, normally security just um, sort them out a bit and they're sore for a few days. Uh, Gotta leave people with hope or, you know. Didn't really look like they had much hope. Maddie, she just looks over at Maddie and she's like... Maddie looked really broken when we were actually there. She, Sorry to talk about you while you're right here, but... I'm used to it. You looked like a one rat in, in the torchlight. You, you were... You, you looked so scared that something was going to go wrong. Well, when the guards come for you, it's... I had the guards come for a few of the people I spoke to there and worked with them. 
they came back most of the time and they often came back sore. Um, it's normally for punishment or solitary or something. Now it doesn't sound good but I'm glad we have you back. Honey. Yes, you're home and that's what matters. But uh, payment went well, everything went well? Yeah, there, there seemed to be uh, no issues with doing that. Uh, we, we got escorted through, everything seemed to be fine. Had to go through a few levels of bureaucracy. They'd already uh, started the paperwork, it just had to be stamped for approval. So everything seemed fairly fine. Hmm. Which was a bit of a relief. Ah, one more thing. Sam and I have an idea of something of an alliance between a, a few of the surface groups and us. Uh, something that would mean that we could go as a collective and attempt to deal with the slaver group and ensure they don't hurt anyone ever again. Hmm. In, as a single force unit we're not strong enough but together if we combine forces and, and we were smart about how we did it we could in theory be able to take out enough of them that it would stop them from doing it. Yes. Yes, we could do a show of force. Yes. You mentioned um, Burn Village had power? Yes. Charged hyper batteries? Yes. Um, they gave us the energy we needed. We could send out some of our heavier forces. Yes. We could... Wouldn't want them away from the bunker, but. No. We could send... We could charge hyper batteries. With a little bit of notice we could get in a probably... Two of the older power suits operational. And I, I believe Sam said that Lincoln was interested in, in more of the heavy weapons and it would allow them to fire from distance. I assume he summarised your talk with Lincoln. Yes. Great. Mm. Well, we're still building the um, the scopes for them. Yes. Uh, apparently, uh, building them is easy, but uh, trying to make a good product, especially if this is the first batch, that's the difficult part. Mm. Um, we could probably give them to as is. They probably are more familiar with uh, actually using them than we are. But yeah. Ah uh, well. I can attempt to have a look. I took as many notes as I could. Jones might be better to look at them than I would, though. Mm. It's more in his brain, but... Yes, uh... Turns out he's a lot of skills that we didn't realise. Apparently so. Although... I think Winter might have known that. I Maybe. think she sent him for no reason. Maybe. Out of all the people she could have picked, you know. <laughs> she does have her ways. I half thought she was just trying to get him out of the place, but... And he's being really useful. <laughs> You're so mean to him. Getting so burned behind the scenes. You just want to get back to Ben's religion and stay there with all your friends. Oh, defense. Right. Alright, well, I trust you guys as emissaries. Um, do what you think is right. We'll see what we can. Wouldn't want to overstep our bounds, but I think we have a pretty good idea of what the bunker would agree to anyway. Good. Good. Um, we'll take care of Maddie here and get you back to work as soon as you can. Uh, of course, I'm not forcing you. Maddie sort of weakly smiles. So. I'll just kicked almost death by a giant kangaroo and I still want to get back out of there. Thank you very much. Sam, sounds weirdo. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Sam, Sam is just. Was it a sadist or a masochist is the one that enjoys me? Yeah. He's in security. Yeah, he, he's a sadist masochist. <laughs> so I just bow, nod, and head, off, head on out. Yep. Because I too want to go and take a moment to rest and then debrief. And also turn in my weapons. Uh, yes, so you do all that. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> so, you're sleeping and recovering from quite broken ribs. You're asleep, are you doing anything else before headed off the road? 
Well, that might be a good point for you guys all to have a rest. Or to attempt to recover. Some will take quite a lot longer than other people. Uh, might even fine. say a week. <laughs> and um, we will see you uh, right after the ashes, after the dark, very soon. Thank you for joining us for the show. Yeah. And never go sideways, so don't be afraid to stick around. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For the end game. Holy shit. I said the end game, what do I fucking do? <laughs> we are. Um, I need that back. <laughs> no, no, you cannot. Nah, yeah. yeah. But who knew Harry died? Me. Oh. Um, alright, so thanks for watching. Um, I don't know, what's everyone's thoughts on things, current events? And the I game? think there needs to be a significant amount more Daryl in my life. <laughs> Can he come to my bedside and tell me it's going to be okay and Aww. gently pat my hair? Oh, there's a... Can I at least hallucinate it? You can. You can hallucinate every, anything you want. I'm hallucinating the shit out of that. Can I, can I rest with my head gently on Daryl's lap and the dog on my leg? I mean, you can hallucinate it. That was Aww. three successes for my hallucination. Um, it was vivid. Yeah, very vivid hallucination. Um, no, wait, all you don't know is... Um, Ella has a um, an APB essentially out on Daryl. He comes in the bunker. He gets brought straight to her. <laughs> As it should so always be. Safely escorted to me. <laughs> uh, he has food, and it didn't cost him anything. If Christmas still existed, I'm pretty sure this would be it.
What do you mean it didn't cost him anything? It cost him a whole coin and he fed the no, whole thing. No! I think he didn't eat it. after! No, he definitely paid for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um... So what happens is you buy everyone a round of food. Uh, you, you guys, like... <coughs> rat, rat. That's one of those things... I, to stir up another player, you gave him the credit, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, because he hates it. Yeah, and then it's like... How do I have this really convenient source of food? Blah, 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 blah. Thanks for feeding me, guy. <laughs> I mean, we know now that if we just do this bank heist, we're going to be rolling in coin. I just had a dream sequence of people enjoy Daryl's company. I mean, that's the hallucination episode. When your gas goes wrong, you'll Yeah, that's what Sam is doing next week. He will be having the Daryl dream all, yeah, all night. Because you're not here oh. next Thursday? Next Thursday. You're here Monday and Tuesday? Yes. Alright. I hope you're there for Monday and Tuesday. You run it. That's <laughs> yeah, my shop and there's been an empty seat. I mean, on Tuesday night, that'll probably work fine. Well, I hope uh, you know how to actually hit the start button on the stream, because I certainly don't. Uh, well, you've done it before. I believe in you. It's fine, it's fine. Um, yeah, well, I am planning still, I do want to have the hallucinogenic gas episode where we just yes. do lasers and feelings. It's like yes. one page instruction. And can we be like guided through it by a giant Daryl that's like 20 foot tall? You'll be like the. Ryan right kangaroo because according to the chat it's his persona. <laughs> oh. He's a, he's a were according <laughs> to the chat. Oh, I did start on this first sort of stuff. I'm sorry to furries out there, I know some of you... You're just making it so easy. <laughs> it's an easy Thank group you. to pick on. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, now I'm picturing like uh, in um, the Batman Arkham games, where it's Scarecrow, their levels, except now it's Daryl with his laser rifle. <laughs> we have to run and hide behind low walls as he scans yeah. for us with his eyes. Oh, we have some Kung Fu kangaroos. Like that really bad one. Oh, even better, can we have like Matrix style Kung Fu kangaroos in the, when we're tripping balls on the gas and like have to fight our way through them like with hand to hand combat? Or, yeah, but have best this, still, can have... we have bazooka kangaroos? I mean, yeah, you just give steal my ideas. <laughs> By my ideas, I mean stuff I'm taking from other people. Yeah, it was my idea. You're stealing second hand ideas right now and he does not appreciate it, right? I'm curious what people's thoughts on the regulators are. Because I don't it know exactly what way. Well, I don't know how I'm pitching them, that's it. I know what they are in mind. I agree with them, but I didn't agree with when they were hurting someone that was especially released from their care. <laughs> so I was ready to punch on. Yeah, like, I, I agree to a degree. <laughs> you agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree with them. Like, I, I understand the principle of what they're doing, but there are times when it's too far. Like, what happened in the first episode? <laughs> to quote Padme. This is how, this is how democracy dies. The thunderous applause. <laughs> how about Lucas? This was his thoughts with them. They're fine. Still working, there's no problem. I guess we follow the rules, do your yeah. sentence. <laughs> also, I can't believe we're going to set up a new democracy on the surface. Well, someone's got to do it, and obviously they're not. Bloody lazy. <laughs> I get to be the, the chief administrator of all the surface. First citizen boys. I'm going to be the assassin. <laughs> See, this is what you all think, but I'm secretly just gonna overthrow you all and have a dictatorship. Aww. He has put uh, chips in all the uh, the vaccines. Yeah. That's what he's studying at Keegan's for. <laughs> so I, I decided, ra I, I should warn you, in the, in the lead up to the stream, I did decide randomly that flat bunker is worth thing. <laughs> Yes, and it was very funny. Minas also reckons that, uh, from his perspective, the regulators feel like they don't really give a toss about the people around them, and it kind of works for them. They stole it from me. <laughs> well, from my perspective, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> <laughs> then you are lost! <laughs> you are like a brother to me, Bananakin. <laughs> <laughs> Your anger. Only Sith deal in absolutes, but wait! <laughs> Only slavers deal in absolutes. <gasps> um. Only regulators deal in absolutes? <coughs> Only everyone seems to deal in absolutes. Uh, that's, that's absolutely true. So why are you off next week? Just for fun. Oh, fair enough. Literally <laughs> going to visit my sister in Sydney. Oh, that's cute. I know, it's super cute, right? That's and she's taking me to a Mexican festival. We're going to drink tequila and make tacos. So, like, Aw, that's adorable. I know, right? Well, have a... 
enjoyable next morning. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I will. <laughs> the surrounding bed and floor might not. <laughs> so we should probably decide what we intend to do for next week. Are we just going to have the week off or should we do a rerun for next week? I hear that uh, a regular for Tabletop Fables might be keen to take the seat. You too. You have to like... Just yeah, we have up. to share this. We have to just like... <laughs> and I should probably actually contact that person and yes. organise it all. <laughs> I think I've mentioned it already, so it's just... You yeah, have, I just need to actually contact that person yes. and organise it all. Minutes asks you to take take him with you, as he needs a TNT night. Oh. Well, I think I've only got carry-on luggage, but if you can fit in that and get under, like, seven kilos in the next few days... Look, if he tries hard enough, he'll make it. If he has enough Mexican, he'll weigh about seven <laughs> kilos. <laughs> uh, or bad Mexican, anyway. Um, <laughs> no, refill on good Mexican over there. It, no, no, wait, wait. I figured out how you can how you can carry him with you. You just like as in a we trench coat. No, no, as we on re- my shoulders. As we referenced before, you just get the knife and you get the skin and you just wear the skin and he's with you. In spirit, maybe. In, in, with skin, yes. <laughs> it's not spirit, it's skin. Too bad about the other organs. But yeah. I'm thinking trench coat is probably just the easier way to do it. Oh yeah, so he is the trench coat. So he's just like hanging off of you. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> I'll be obsessed with it. It's my man's skin rug. I'm taking it with me and you can't stop yeah. me. It's my man's skin cloak. That's why I always Winter do the, um, I need those bits for the darts because it's um, Hannibal reference. <laughs> or, you know, Silence of the Lambs reference. It's Buffalo. Minus protests to the flame. <laughs> well, then you're just going to have to make weight. Start running a lot because you've got to go under seven kilos. First of all, this isn't an implication. It's a direct statement. And second of all, those are your two options. <laughs> I mean, we are currently on the internet, so you probably shouldn't threaten to flay someone. Why not? Yeah, that is... Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. It's a <laughs> joke. Half the internet is, isn't it? It's a joke because he's our Thursday tech boffin. So oh, he knows oh I see. Tech. We're ironically flaying people. Yes. What we're doing there, ha, get it? Get it? You're being flayed. It's my new reality TV oh. show. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, camera guys, come out! <laughs> they can't, they got no skin. <laughs> you don't need to be able to drink if you're consuming tequila. <laughs> you can just I don't absorb know it through osmosis. You consume tequila. Through osmosis in your skin. Yeah, exactly, it's like knowledge. You just I mean, like, like, sip on the book and it goes through. I have seen documentary evidence of like some people who drink while standing up doing handstands against walls. Um, that seems to always end poorly though. <laughs> can't imagine why. I mean, it's like for when your stomach can't have, to have more alcohol. You just don't use your stomach. You start the other way. Just go to the toilet and start it all over again. Like everyone else. It's very... I'll put it this way, America. And, uh, <laughs> do you mean America or do you mean America? <laughs> I think that one. <laughs> yeah, we gave the Mexicans, well, Mexican food a little bit of shit before. Definitely, they aren't like that. We're talking gringos. It's <laughs> like... We talked about flying you, gringo, so and that counts. Jesus Christ. I don't know if we haven't insulted yet. Should we get to that? Um, the French. They've been asking for it for too long. <laughs> yeah. Let's get them. <laughs> Let's I get them like you, a cowboy on Notre Dame. I told you it never went sideways. Did you get the French? I rolled a one. Is that yes? You got them or no? You failed to get them. Uh, we... <laughs> Try <bien. laughs> What are you Try trading bien. for, Ben? <laughs> And how did they get better? Well, he's the best Kylo! <laughs> uh, I think of that, really know we might end it. Yes. That's really a good idea. Uh, so, <coughs> we've got D&D on Monday. Uh, D&D on Tuesday. Tuesday. Monday's group are currently in a library uh, reading all the Forbidden Secrets of the Universe. Yes, uh, fine. Tuesday, I have been sick and I'm actually slightly behind, so I don't know where they're up to. So disappointed. Also, try and uncover the secrets of the universe. <laughs> Um, um, I think they're meant to be two water deep and back by now, and they haven't left for water deep yet. Yeah, I, I mean, from everything I know of the Tuesdays group, um, that tends to be. But boy, did they have a good time procrastinating. <laughs> yeah. Callum's currently having a grand old time. <laughs> it's like you're leaving town, there's a rock on the ground, half an hour talking to the rock. The rock doesn't respond. I'm going to try tickling it. <laughs> it doesn't respond. I can't speak to rocks. I can't. It's not a spell. <laughs> Well, I turn into a snowman so I can speak to it. It tells you to piss off. <laughs> I spoke to it! 
character can have a conversation and befriend it. Does it have a pet direwolf? Does yes. <laughs> well, Luna does now. Meanwhile, on Monday, I can't even have a goal at Tuesday's group about like enjoying the, the sights and smelling the roses. Because on Monday, we haven't done a single thing towards our quest. That's okay, that's what Cal's for. No. She's finishing your quest. No, again. that's not our quest. Our, every single PC has gotten confused about important. what they're doing. <laughs> Um, we're trying to recreate the Eye of Abathor that has nothing to do with bringing the moon back. We have spent 12 not. episodes no. on a side quest. <laughs> we oh have been we just... and, and keeps telling everyone, oh yeah, no, this is to get the moon back. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is going because I don't know any better. Well, I assume at this point all the PCs believe it is. Yeah, well, yeah, they basically do. You've because... got to like Mesa Shivani and you're like, oh, yeah, we need to get this, this, and this. What for? To bring the moon back. That's weird, but yeah, right. That's a good thing to do. What weird flex, but okay. I guess I'll use all my power to help you guys out for a reason. Yeah. He's going to, like, reflect on this one day and be writing something like, What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's... I, I already like the fact it's the... Like, I've ever thought. So it's... Um, the eye of the god of, the dwarven god of greed who's imprisoned. Which we accidentally free, and now we're just greedily going around using up all everyone else's resources to get all these artifacts so we can build it. Almost while like exactly we're doing, what one. While telling him we're doing some sort of noble deed. And believing you are most of the time as well. well Kaz is very convincing. Yeah. He, he was just like, we should do this, and everyone else sort of went, okay, and believed him. Yeah, if you believe legit. in your heart that you're doing the right thing, you're not ethically wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, no one's telling the truth, just no one's lying. <laughs> Far no lies. He just spins an excellent tale. Yeah. The truth is so much funnier and from Jafar's perspective. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it, it doesn't mean it wasn't true. Well, the eye thought might still come in helpful one day. <laughs> I better. I'm sure it'll be very interesting <laughs> when I steal it off you guys. Episode 50, we create the eye of thought. Cody's just like, oh, here's the card, and it's just like, it does nothing. <laughs> it's like, whoa! Yeah, when the sun hits it, it reflects it. Yeah, it just looks into awesome. a kangaroo's face. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, you get it and, and the card that comes with it just says, um, uh, I am just our greatest rogue in the land, or whatever the, the paper it is says. <laughs> yeah. Um, to, to be fair to that eye and the, what, that glint of light, I rolled a d10 as you approached and got a zero. So you got up with a chance. Anything in between, you weren't even going to get close. Um, then I rolled. I, I wish the, I didn't get close now. <laughs> well, you were, that was your I, mistake. I, I gave you like three chances. You just didn't do that well. And um, and then, right. but I, I you always did well to get another chance. And then I rolled again, and I got a one. And it was uh, I crit failed. I hate that guy now. Every time I see him, I'm just gonna like use my nine points and in <laughs> intimidation to like do it. Well, you are inherently scary now. Oh no, did you actually buy that yet? No, that would be. You can buy it now. Yeah. Yeah, so he. Um, so Everyone's going to hear the stories about me being pummeled by kangaroos and like walking up by myself and coughing blood. And just... Skips. Well, that's what they'll hear, but it is kangaroos. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, but like, that guy is terrifying. You, you go have like a bunch of extra scars and stuff, and that's. Ticks will dig it. No, they'll be yeah, scared of you. It's men who'll dig it, like Daryl. No, Daryl will be scared Dogs will dig it. Unless Daryl has a higher intimidation pool. Does he? Nope. <laughs> He's too nice. Take that, Daryl. He'll be too scared to say no when I ask him out for a nice seafood dinner. <laughs> yeah, because you're a nice guy and that's how that works. And yeah. you totally know what seafood is. like, hey, Daryl, we're going for a seafood dinner now, aren't we? I've done eight favours for you. I punched my card all the way to the end. We're going for dinner. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> there will be expectations after. Let's go. <laughs> I'm buying you dinner and that's a contract whether you agree to it or not. <laughs> it's a binding contract. <laughs> Quite feel ethical. <laughs> <laughs> when does it ever? So tell you when it's gay? <laughs> not like that, it's not. Apparently, I'm now the spug of the world because I punched a skippy. <laughs> no, I can't remember you punched it. <laughs> no, I, I really didn't. I just ran from it. I think you. Um, I think you. It's uh, how the escalation of the story is going. I think you buffed its claws up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> With my flesh. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we'll call it there, and uh, <laughs> so yeah, we'll see you Monday and Tuesday, and. Most of us will see you next Thursday. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around, guys. We are going to do a raid, so stick around for a couple more minutes. Mm -hmm.